QD for the sub, MCAN2 for the sub. Dude, why are the why is the alert box going off? <laughs> Later, surely. All right. Dude. Everybody floating in. Uh, how is everyone doing on this fan fucking tastic Sunday chat? Reg, red, not reg, red for the sub, logo for the sub. Chat, it's a fucking react day. Hey, I'm a little bit late. I know I'm a little bit late. I had to set up. Uh, didn't go through the video suggestion tab, so I had to do that pre stream. You know, pulled a few videos uh, from, you know, the recent video suggestions, some from the old. Uh, and we got a lot of videos that we're going to be reacting to today. Chat. Murloc for the 20 gifteds. What the fuck? Thank you for the fucking subs. Dub in the chat for that. Thank them if you get a sub. Thank you for the fucking 20 gifteds. Fucking off rip. Beginning of stream. Haven't even finished my intro. Thank you for the fucking 20 subs. Meloc. My God. Thank them if you get a sub. Thank you for the 20 gifteds. Afflicted Coolio for the sub. Plabsy for the three. I'm off school this whole week, but sadly, I have driver's ed during the entire break, but I'm excited to drive. Any tips? Jim for the sub. Um, Tips for driving. Solaris for the sub. Preeb for the sub. Honest tips? I'm not going to give a joke tip. Honest tips for driving? Uh, Don't fucking tailgate. I mean, driver's ed, your fucking instructor is just going to yell at you the entire time, and they're like fucking pussies when it comes to driving. If you want me to be honest, like driver's ed instructors are going to be by the book, which is obviously how you're supposed to drive. But they're also going to be like, dude, I remember my driver's ed instructor would slam on the brakes if I was pulling up to a stop sign going 10 miles an hour. Like when you when you do driver's ed, they also have a brake in the seat next to you. And if you don't brake like like honestly like decrease to the point where you're fucking going two miles an hour rolling up to a stop sign they're gonna freak out uh my driver my driving instructor used to say that when i would pull up to a stop sign you know how like if you kind of slam on your brakes you go like this like your car when it stops you go and it's like a little fucking you lean forward and back he says that's never supposed to happen i said buddy you drive like a loser that's not what i said but I wanted to be like, dude, who the fuck is pulling up? Who the fuck is pulling up to a stop sign going three miles an hour? Like, you're going 10, and then in the last five feet, you fucking nail the brake, right? Like, I'm not saying you should be pulling up going 40 fucking miles an hour. That's just unsafe. But, like, no one's fucking going two miles an hour up to a stop sign. But honest, if you want honest advice, don't fucking tailgate people when you have your license. There are way too many people on the highway that are five feet behind me when I'm going 70 miles an hour. If I have to slam on my brakes, they're hitting me, right? I don't care if they're Spider-Man, right? You are not having the reaction time to stop your car when you are 10 feet behind me. If I, you're 10 feet behind me and I'm going 20 miles an hour, that's different. Right, But if I'm going 70 and this guy in front of me slams on my brakes and I go from 70 to 30 in fucking two seconds, you're killing me. Right, You're also going to... Realistically, you're probably going to kill yourself. But PDA and floating for the sub. Kerbo for the three. How do you streaming? Uh, are you having a good skibbity Sunday? Stop. You want to know a cool fact? Cool fact. Blippy took a fat deuce on his... Bro, I, can we stop talking about the Blippy shit thing? Oh my god. I know, I know, Blippi pooped on his friend, right? Yeah. It was, I, I'm like, what the fuck? I, like, <laughs> uh, why, are, why are we still talking? I feel like this doesn't deserve more than, like, three minutes to fucking talk about. We talked about it fucking Thursday for, like, ten minutes. It's not, why, why, press it Skibbity Sunday, by the way. Jesus Christ. 
Uh, Gabs for the three. Once the doctors have the flu. I'm sorry to hear that. Cooper for the five gifted. Thank you for the five gifted. Thank you for the five Thank you for the five gifted. Lydia for the five. Says love you. No, Key Lime and Drake for the sub fridge for the five. Says best streamer W Mans. Chucky Baby, Solaris, Preve, and Jib for the sub. Plepsy for the three. I already read that. Melock, thank you for the fucking subs again. Uh, DJ White Snake, Red, and Loga for the sub. Uh, Cooper for the five gifted. Chat. Do we, who, what happened with Blippy? Okay, apparently, uh, yo, oh my god, glancing over it. Before Blippy was a YouTuber, there's, uh, like, a video of him taking a shit on his friend. It's consensual, but it's, like, fucking poop fetish shit or something. I don't fucking know. I'm not watching the video. My chats informed me of it. I don't, I, why would I want to see that, right? Somebody said syphilis Sunday. Don't say that. Mary for the sub. Rundown of the reacts we got today. Starting out with a trailer for a horror movie. Uh, called Stop Motion. JP for the sub. Sometimes you guys send trailers in the video suggestion tab. And a lot of the time, you know, I don't want to watch them. But, you know, sometimes you, you send some trailers that look mildly interesting. So I'll watch this one. Uh, then we have, this is why you shouldn't use dating apps. Cop body cam video. Which couple has had the most sex? This is going to be a terrible fucking cut video. I can't wait to peel my eyes out watching this. Uh, I tested the most, the world's most luxurious restaurants. Ages 1 to 100 use Apple Vision Pro. What was the worst year in film history? The most deadly jobs in America. How this nerdy team became the FBI's most wanted trafficker. And every paradox in eight minutes. We have a lot of videos to react to today, chat. Does that sound fucking good? Moist for the sub. Uh, JP for the sub. Playboy for the three. Not gonna lie, I fell asleep uh, before stream feeling better. What time is it for you? Fridge for the sub. I'm gonna blow my nose. Hold up. Still sick, by the way. Been over a week. Oh my god. Like, I can't get a break, man, with being sick. It's like I'm sick, and then I'm not sick for, like, a week, and then I'm sick again for two weeks. Concrete for the sub. Oh. You know what'll help? An original prime. You know what'll help my sickness? Drinking a caffeinated, artificially flavored drink. That'll definitely help me, right? Right, chat? Will that will this cure me? I don't even know what original prime is. It smells like lemonade. Doesn't taste like lemonade. What is that, bro? I hate I hate when they title things original. Or just whatever it is, like monster, like just original monster. Because it you can't pinpoint what the flavor is at all. Like, it's just an indiscernible sweet. It's just sweet. I couldn't, if you were like, what does it taste like? It's just sweet. That's, I like, I can't, I literally can't relate it to anything. That's why I like when they have, like, actual flavors, like cherry. Just give me a cherry. Goaded for the fucking raid. Caden Saruko for the sub. Fridge for the thousand. But he says favorite horror game and chill for the sub. Concrete for the sub. Chat, favorite horror game all time. Damn. Amanda the Adventurer was good. I think that was a unique horror game. If I'm, if I'm basing it off of what horror game I thought was the coolest, probably... Probably Amanda the Adventurer. If I'm basing it off of what horror game I found the scariest, uh, I'd probably go Summer 58. If I'm going off of um, what scary game I enjoyed the most, I don't know if you would count this as a scary game, but uh, fuck, what was that one dark anthology game that I really liked, chat? I don't know if you guys liked it. Little Hope. Dark Anthology Little Hope was a fucking goaded game. Also, somebody informed me that Supermassive Games, the makers of Until Dawn, uh, and also all the Dark Anthology games, have another PS5 game called, um, fuck, what is it called? Supermassive PS5 game. Or PS, PS4 game. What is it? Hidden Agenda. They have, like, another game. So should we play that at some point? VSERP for the sub. I know they're making Little Nightmares 3. Which is fire because I love that dev company, uh, so I think they'll they'll fucking do it well. But I'm curious to see if that's also a good game because I've never heard of it, which makes me think that it might not be good. 
But I also looked it up, and it's only like two hours. So I was going to say we rocked that one day. I haven't played a PS5 game since Spider-Man. Or since Until Dawn. Caden for the sub. All right. Chad, are we ready to lock in for the videos today? I don't really have a story time for today or anything. Have you played Little Miss Fortune? No, I haven't. Would you guys want me to play that? A lot of you guys recommend that. It just looks like 2D, but it also looks like mildly funny slash horror game-ish. So I would be down to play that. Uh, there's a lot of... I am not on short supply of horror games. Uh, when I tell you, chat, I, I would say I'm on short supply of other games. But I have 104 games in my wish list on Steam. Uh, and when I tell you, I, I would reasonably play all of them. Like, you guys send some fire games. I would say 70% of them are horror games. Like, a lot of... It, it, I, I don't know why. I feel like just making a good horror game is easier than making... They're not a good. Making an enjoyable or interesting horror game is easier than making, like, an enjoyable story game. Or, like, a thriller. You know? Because you have to put more into it, I feel. Uh, backs for the three. Thanks for being a W streamer. I like, really like watching you. You're really funny. Thank you. Spidey for the sub. I rest for the three. Eating a pizza right now. Dub. Uh, fridge for the thousand. But he says W opinion. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, lock in for the fucking reacts here. Sally face. Why? Do, what is Sally face? Why does that sound fucking familiar? Oh, I'm not playing Sally face. That game looks dumb as hell. I play Little Miss Fortune. You guys recommended Sally face. And I watched a playthrough. And bro, half of the fucking game is this. Just this kid walking with a mask. And then it and then it transitions and it's like it's like a 2D game, just like Little Miss Fortune, but it looks even worse. And then it just transitions to the kid going. And that's the game, bro. The second you the second you put me in a game like that, I'm not playing it. I'm not, I'm not playing it, bro. I can't. I'll take dude, hold up. Now I'm actually now I'm actually gonna prove myself right on how accurate that fucking was. Sally face gameplay, dude. I'm actually about to ratio you. Top of the morning, two ladies. My name is. <laughs> so I accept the Safety, please make your way to the nearest exit. Hello? Sorry, I didn't think. By complete that. Hmm. You understand? Where did I have to get it from my dad? I <laughs> did it to get. It's just walking. Like Little Misfortune. I'd be down to play because there's walking, but there's like more. Top of the morning to you ladies. My name is Jack. Oh, that wasn't as enthusiastic, Jack. There's like more to Little Misfortune. And I don't know. I feel like the game just looks more appealing in the sense of like, I like the art style better. It doesn't look old. I don't know. I would play this. I would definitely be down to play this. Is this scary though? Is Little Misfortune scary, chat? Katie and Sick for the sub, Grind for the sub, Black for the three, Bax for the three. Thanks for being a W streamer. I really like watching you. You're really funny. Did I already read that? Dude, I feel like I have short-term memory loss. Fridge for the thousand biddies. Sorry for the constant small donos. What do you mean small donos? You sent me $10. It's not a fucking small dono. Thank you for the fucking thousand bits, dude. Sorry for the constant small donos. I don't have enough money to buy in bulk. Also favorite streamer. Bro, I still appreciate... <laughs> I still appreciate the donos, man. I t don't say small dono. Regardless of how big or small it is. All right. Chat, lock in. First video of the day. We got to get through a fucking, like, eight videos. Lock in. Stop motion official trailer. How much caffeine does this original Prime have? Does it have caffeine? Does this have caffeine in it, chat? It says energy drink. Dude, this looks like some shit on, like, a, a DS, though. Am I right? Like, the font? You know, it reminds me of Pop Tropica. Am I crazy? I, do you guys even know what Pop Tropica is? I feel like some of you guys are too young. I feel like this reminds me of like a drink that I'd have in like Pop Tropica. How much caffeine's in this? It has a acesulfame potassium. That must be good. It doesn't even say. Like that's an issue to me. Okay, 200 milligrams. Yeah, to the dome. Probably make me fucking seize out now. Lock in. 200 milligrams is a lot. Like, how much would you guys say is a lot of caffeine? Like, I used to, when I used to work with G Fuel, they had the 140s and the 3s. 
And I could chug the 140s, like, fine. Like, Charlie's one that he had, the fucking Divine Peach. But I could not, I could not slug a whole 300 milligram. I can't. And now I'll drink, like, a Rain sometimes here and there, or I'll have those fucking Gorilla Mine ones. But I think some of those are, like, 2, 250. And I, dude, I just can't get, I, I feel like that's just because I don't use caffeine that much. I could probably have, like, 100 milligrams. Jackie, but the sub floating for the three. Would you play Fran boats commonly like with people that play Misfortune? Send it in the game session tab. I would have to see if I like Little Misfortune first, obviously, but Squeaky's for the three. Are you the voice actor of Jesse from the Minecraft story mode? No. Uh, I've never even seen the Minecraft story mode. Lock in. Somebody said Prime is ass. They send me Prime, uh, and some of them are fire. I don't like their energy drinks, if you want me to be real. I think that that This is fucking fire, right? The cherry freeze, bomb. This, mid. What more? I gotta get more drinks in the back of the fridge. It's fucking, we're lacking, dude. Hornet for the sub. Squeakies for the three. All right, lock in. I keep saying lock in, then I'm pausing. Mega for the sub, Hornet for the sub. She looks sick. Such a morbid imagination. Bringing dead things to life. Hey, she emerges from her cave. Ella. When do you think you'll finish this film of yours? I don't know. People that have the patience to do stop motion are fucking insane. If you are capable of taking m just minimal images and then barely moving and reshooting and barely moving and reshooting and making something that's longer than 10 seconds is so much work. Like, to make a stop-motion movie, oh. What's all that stuff? It's called stop motion animation. What do you think? It's a bit boring. It's not finished. Facts. It's not boring. Make a new one. A new one? Yeah. I know a better story. You want to hear it? There's a girl. She's scared. There's someone coming. Who's coming? The man no one wants to meet. The Ashman. But you could bring it to life. What does the Ashman do? Don't be scared. Bro, I'd send my kid to therapy, bro. If I had like an eight year old child and they were like, do you want a better story? And then they go on to describe the most genuinely horrifying thing that is utterly descriptive. I'm going to go, okay, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. Do you want to hear something that's even scarier? And you're like, oh, what? It, what is it? You're expecting your kid to be like, when you drop your ice cream in the middle of the road. <laughs> and they're like, you're all alone in the woods. It's been days. Something's watching you, but you don't know what. You feel a cold chill trickle down your spine. I'd be like, dude. <laughs> I'd be, yo, I don't even believe in, like, possession. I'd be like, yo, my kid's a demon. Whatever it is you think you saw and It's like, am I wrong that, like, every new horror movie has a kid like that? Like, why is that a fucking thing? Like any any movie, it's like it's like movies that try to be like the conjuring or some shit. It always has like some fucking kid that's just like so creepy. Just <laughs> and they don't explain why they're the way they are, but it's just like, yeah, this kid's like into like demon movies and shit like that. Like what what seven year old wants to talk about horror? It's not real. <laughs> I 
I don't want to make this film anymore. Don't you want to hear the next bit of the story? <gasps> You know, the freakiest thing, the freakiest thing that people always bring up, oh god, see, it's like whenever I watch trailers, I just yap. And the freakiest thing that people mention is that the uncanny valley is, like, terrifying to even children, and people try to say that's, like, proof that there were once human-looking things that weren't human, and you're able to, like, decipher them as, like, a survival mechanism. What is Uncanny Valley? Bro. Like when something looks human, but it's not. What's like a good example of Uncanny Valley? I mean like this, but this is like AI. Like it doesn't look, it looks off. Like it's not human. Right? Or Momo. Now, Momo's not Uncanny Valley. Momo just looks like a fucking monster. Uncanny Valley looks like almost human, but like something's off. Nate, Scrub, and Omize for the sub. Joe Bart for the thread. Would you ever consider playing the Crew Motorfest? I have the... Oh, wait, no, I have Wreckfest downloaded, not Motorfest. Are you into racing games like Need for Speed? Yeah, but I don't know if my chat would watch that. Life and Mega for the sub. You can send it in the game session chat, though. 400 for the sub. <laughs> Yo, did Handsome Fella win the Streamer Awards last night? No? Who won? Streamer of the Year. I Dude, I, I fucking forgot that was last night. Was it good? Kai Sinat won Streamer of the Year. Jigsy won Gamer of the Year. Sapphire Award Best Female was Valky Ray. Legacy was Maximilian Dude. Streamer's Choice was Liam. League of Their Own was Extra Emily. Best Variety Streamer, Queso. Wow, Queso beat out Ludwig and XQC. Best Just Chatting is Kai Sinat. <sighs> would I throw would I throw Best Just Chatting to Kai? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say what I would have voted. Kai Sinat Streamer of the Year, I will give. Gamer of the Year, Jinxie, yeah, Sapphire, blah, blah, blah. I would say I agree with all of the... I mean, I don't know this one. I would agree with all of them outside of Best Just Chatting. I would not say that Kai is the Best Just Chatting streamer. I'm not dissing him. I'm not saying he's bad. But I would say, like, maybe, like, Will Neff or, like, Pay Money Wubby are better. Even your age. Best VTuber, Iron Mouse. Breakthrough streamer, Jinxie. International streamer, Quackity. Streamed event, Dodgeball. Name your price, best content org, AMP, best shared channel, best game of the year, lethal company, that's not shocking. Best Minecraft streamer, Quackity, roleplay streamer, rising award, FPS, best battle royale, hidden gem. Where the hell is the one that handsome fellow was in? What was he in? Tyler 1 won best chess streamer. That is shocking. That is the most riveting thing that happened last night. Wow. Rising star? Oh, here. Nora Explorer. Who the fuck is that? I might recognize their face. I usually don't recognize people's users. No, I don't know who this is. They do GTA 5. Why does every fucking streamer on fucking God's Green Earth do fucking GTA 5 roleplay? Fuck. It's, I feel like it's a fucking black hole that just sucks people in. Like, you just get into that content and then you never leave. Stop motion. Back to it. I want to go. I want to go. What happens when it takes on a life of its own? I'm letting y'all know, when GTA 6 drops, I'm playing it. I'm not doing roleplay, bitch. <laughs> I'm not doing roleplay. I'm going to be running the story mode. I'm going to be running the heists on IRL multiplayer. And I'm going to be sweating the absolute piss out of that game. And then fucking bullying the other people in my online lobbies. Okay? 
day one of GTA 6 drop, I'm spending $200 on the game. And I'm fucking getting all of, I'm getting all of the most expensive shit. And I'm just going to fucking run around and kill people. And that is literally all I'm doing. Like, I, uh, you're welcome to watch the stream, right? But that's what's going to happen, right? I'm going to pimp out a fucking bulletproof car. And then I'm going to fucking run around and run over the people that are, like, level one, right? Maybe let one in, maybe, like, let one into your car and then kick him out and shoot him, right? Like, something like that. Thatcher and Finney for the sub alley for the three. First time, uh, first stream I'm in. I've been watching YouTube for months now. Decided to make a Twitch account. Dub. Well, welcome to the stream. Nate Scrub and Omai's for the sub. $200 just to buy the game? No, I'm saying I'm going to buy IRL currency. No, I'm going to buy in-game currency. I will be that guy. Uh, I'm going to buy the game, and then I'm going to buy shark cards. Uh, I, will spend, I, I will spend money to be... I will pay to win. I will, I'm letting you know. I'm, I will pay to win. I'll still grind the game out, but I'm going to pay to win. 100% uh, of the time. Eh, looks all right. Looks like it might be like some uh, some kind of boring movie in the sense of like I don't think it's gonna be that scary, but I think stop motion itself is interesting to throw into a horror movie. Ah, uh, next. This is why you shouldn't use dating apps. You're too loud. I'm not too loud. Scariest horror movie that I've ever seen. I couldn't tell you, dude. Um, I don't know. Best horror movie, probably like a horror thriller. But somebody just said the FNAF movie. You're insane. Oh my god. Sorry, chat. Hold up. Going off camera. Ew. God, man. It's like, how am I sick for this long? Oh, I didn't even say the thing. I didn't even say the name of the, the fucking video or the movie. Smile was scary. Smile was really scary. Psychological horror is the best horror, in my opinion. Any slasher film, not scary. Most disgusting and gut-wrenching movie I have ever seen that I did not even finish is Terrifier 2. It's not even close. They, I'm going to spoil this, right? In the first movie, they saw a woman vagina down, okay? They hang her upside down, she's naked, and they saw her in half from her genitals all the way through her head. Disgusting, right? And it's a slasher film. It's the only slasher film I find fucking disgusting and terrifying. Second movie, second movie, and this is where I stopped watching, so I don't know what happens after this. This woman's nervous, right? She's in her house. She's like, I'm going to fucking die. He breaks in, cuts her arm off. <sighs> ah, fucking screaming. Stabs her 20 times. Covers her in salt. Pours bleach on her, right? Keeps going at it, right? I don't even know how she died, but... It was like a two-minute scene, and I just went, I'm done. Turned it off, right? I don't get nauseous at movies, and that movie made me never want to watch a Terrifier film in the rest of my life. But it is like, I, that. It's, ter it's fucking terrifying. Terrifier holding scalpel. Him holding the scalpel, that frame is utterly horrifying. It is dead silent. And it's like, the, it's in the first movie. And the woman's like thinking she got away. And then she turns and she's about to leave. And he's just standing there. Like this. That's the monster, right? By the way. I forget his name. Something the Clown. What's his name? Fuck. I always forget. Yo, Cheetah plays for the fucking 20 subs. Art the Clown. Thank you for the 20 subs, Cheetah Place. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for the fucking 20 gifted subs. God damn. Appreciate the fucking subs, dude. Oh my god. Woo. Cheetah Place popped out with the subs as always. Uh, love Jabobo for the sub. Need for the three. Hope to get to two years uh, sub this year. Currently at 19 months. Probably the lowest chance for somebody sub this long, to be honest. Thatcher for the sub. You might. 
I don't know how many chats you have, but maybe. There are, I do have a few subs that are like two year subs and they have like 50 chats. Cheetah, though, thank you for the 20, su uh, 20 subs, man. All right, lock in. This is why you should not use dating apps. It's your boyfriend? It's my Tinder date. Tinder date. On August 28th, 2021, officers attempted a traffic stop on a motorcycle without visible tags. The driver, after making eye contact, evaded the stop leading police on a chase at speeds surpassing 100 miles per hour. Yo, imagine going on a fucking Tinder date and the guy you're on the date with runs from the police. Like, that is nuts. 100 miles an hour on a motorcycle too? Did you hit anything or dead? Down on chestnut. It's a white motorcycle, two riders. It's a male driver, a female passenger. I'd, t I'd get off. Yeah, the, I'd get off the fucking motorcycle. If he slowed down the turn, I'd get off the motorcycle. I'd be like, I'd start punching him, dude. I'm pretty reckless and uh, no tag. Going through Missouri right now. Officers briefly lost sight of the suspect, but alerted nearby colleagues, resulting in his capture. Okay, 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 okay. Get off! Get off! Get off. Come on, man, I'm just trying to impress my date. Get up. Chains are down your back. Yes, sir. Turn around. Good, Chains your back. And, uh, Good thing you didn't kill yourself or anybody else. It's a cute tag. You do it out of fun or yeah, just- Yeah, do it. Going on a police chase, uh, somebody redeemed that. Joe Bar and League for the sub. Going on a police chase at a motorcycle is like fucking so stupid. Like, I've seen, like, two videos of people dying in motorcycle fucking chases. Because you'll just hit something. At some point, like, e if you're in a car, you hit something, you might be able to keep going. But if you fucking... Somebody said, I can't give... Somebody said a gift and asked for me, does Joe actually end stream if you redeem end stream? Uh, yeah, but it depends on what day. Like, if you do it on an event day, no. Because you ride like an asshole. You're going to kill somebody. He's lucky he didn't kill himself. Anything else on you I'm missing? <laughs> but do you end it now? I mean, yeah. If somebody redeemed a 10 million channel point thing, redemption, yeah. But then you're just missing content. But I mean, there probably will be somebody that does it one day. Uh, do you have any Dude, and you go to prison for that. Like, if you if you run from the cops and go, like, 100 miles an hour plus, way different. Way different, you know? Uh, chat, stop spamming don't do it or do it, please. Can we just watch the fucking video? Curious and the wimpy for the sub Mason for the three. John Jones could kill Art the Clown. Uh, by, by the book? No, he couldn't. Screw for the sub. Another spoiler here. Art the Clown's effectively immortal. Um, at least, ba I haven't seen the end of the second movie, so I don't know what happens. But he dies in the first movie. And then just comes back to life. Like, it's like, it's like saying, it's like saying John Jones could kill Michael Myers. Anything else I'm missing on you? No. Nope. No? Nope. Nope. Alright, go ahead, take a seat. You're under arrest for fleeing and eluding and reckless driving, right? Yes, sir. Did he think he was... Oh, he bent his plate up. Yeah, he thought he was going to get away. Wow. Wow, that's like a thing, though. Do you guys know what that... If you bend... There's... Police aren't supposed to chase you after a certain... Not, like, mileage amount, but they're not supposed to exceed a certain, like, speed or some shit, I think. Like, I don't know what state it varies on, but I, I think some states they're not allowed to chase you, right? And so, motorcycle. I know motorcyclists that do this, and I tell them they're fucking idiots. But they'll go on the highway, and they'll go like 130 miles an hour and pass a cop. The cop will turn their lights off, but their plate's bent up, so they didn't read it. And the cop's not going to fucking catch them. And then they just pull off at the nearest exit, and they're good. Like, but, I mean, I'm assuming that's what he was trying to do, but it didn't work. Good catch, Sarge. I'm assuming what was also going through his mind was, I don't want to get pulled over right now, 
And it would also be kind of badass if I got away from the cops with this girl. And then that would be the end of the date. Good catch, Sarge. That's what I'm talking about. Good. That was Try a good catch. Run. He was revenue looking to go. Yeah, he was. Turn it off. Yeah. I yanked him off of it. That was a good catch, Sarge. Holy shit. He could have killed himself. He could have killed his passenger. Oh, it's your bad for her. It's my Tinder date. It's your Tinder date? It's your Tinder date. It's gonna look good when you end up in a morgue from your Tinder date because he's driving 130 running. Hey, listen, I understand that. 130 that's your tinder. miles an hour. Date, but you were just involved in something very serious, so you're gonna go in the back of this cop car for a little bit, okay? You have anything? Well, she's not in trouble, though. She, she's the fucking passenger. On you at all? No? Just tell us now if you have something, okay? Have Imagine right. she was the one that was like, run! Rev it, rev it. We're gonna get out of here. One less reckless idiot. Yeah. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? Good job. That was Sarge right there. Subject also holds his hands down with flashing the staff. Ma'am, do you have anything on you? No, I don't have anything. No weapons, no nothing. No, it's just my phone and my credit card. No, my credit card, my debit card, and my license. Okay, where's your phone? It's all I have. It's just said. Oh, not my credit card, my debit card. Bro, just say, just say your fucking cards. His bag. It's in his bag, okay. I'm just gonna lift your shirt up, just to make sure that you don't have anything on you, okay? Just turn this way. Somebody said that's Taylor Swift. Yo, imagine that actually was Taylor Swift, though. That'd be a whole new album. Okay. Nothing in your bra or anything? No, you can, okay. you can lift yeah. it up if you want no, to. No, no, ma'am. Here's the deal. Calm down, okay? <laughs> Who is this guy to you? I literally just Tinder met date. him like two days ago okay. or a day ago. All right, were you telling him to stop or anything? Yes, it's stop. So... Okay, all right. Here's, here's the deal. Um, she was just on the back, right? Yeah, is that just... Christian McCaffrey? We're going to take you out of country. How the fuck is that one? <laughs> yeah, but we're going to sit you back here, okay? So just, just chill out, all right? When was he a police officer? Just take her out of questions. But we're gonna, we're just gonna detain you right now in the back of the car, just so that we can figure out what's going on. I know you're probably really scared right now, okay? We're just, here we go. We're just trying to take a couple deep breaths. We'll calm down. Are you injured at all? You're not injured at all. Okay, so do you need the fire, you know, the fire department to come at all? Okay. Alright. Do me a favor, just have a seat back here. Check my notes for the beach here, and go ahead and put it back in the room, please. You okay? But I want them to talk to the guy. Okay. Well, listen. You're safe. Okay. You're fine. You you easily could have died tonight. Okay. So, but you're, but you're oh, safe. Oh, would have been instant too, dude. You would have been decapitated. Oh yeah. You fucking hit something going 130. You're gonna be like mush. Right now. Okay. So just. You know when you play uh, Geometry Dash and your little cube dies? That's what you. That's what would happen to your body. Like, it would be like a, like, just instantaneous. It wouldn't, they wouldn't even know who you are. It would just be, you would be dead. Just, just take a couple deep breaths. Just calm down. Yeah, like a pink okay. mist. Did he really, I, I heard, oh, yeah, he was, and you tackled him off. Like, 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 yeah. Go ahead, dump it. Yeah. <laughs> You're coming right off the back. Jeez. <laughs> your phone and your wallet are in, or your phone and your ID are with him in his bag? And my, 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 um, the green vape. If anything, can I have that, please? Because that. <laughs> nah, no lie though. I'm gonna be like, yo, I respect wanting the vape right now. Like, like in that scenario, I'd be like, okay, yeah, get her the vape. Get her the fucking vape. Dude, all my, was going 130 telling this guy to stop. Yeah, let her hit the neck. <laughs> Will that calm you down? Okay. Let me let me get the vape for you. <laughs> so you can calm down, okay? I was right behind it. Uh, I came out to a chestnut. Joe supports vaping. I don't support vaping. But if you were just on a Tinder date where your boy where your fucking date was going 130 miles an hour evading police, you almost died. And you're like, I need to calm down. Can I hit my vape? I'd be like, yeah, sure. I was coming up behind it, he looked at me and took off right through the red light. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Hey, I, I took her out of cuffs. Did you? 
Get rid of this guy. Don't get on somebody's motorcycle. First date, they're like, yeah, I drive a fucking Nagasaki. I'd be like, yeah, no, pass. I'd say, do you have a Toyota? Do you have like a fucking Prius that we could, you know, maybe go to the fucking dinner date to? Nagasaki? What is it called? Nagasaki. <laughs> is that not what it's called? motorcycle oh kawasaki not nagasaki nagasaki is the city jesus christ kawasaki all right chat relax who's done this <laughs> thank you start from the beginning yeah. this is what happened in your perspective um i swiped right nagasaki's on nagasaki is the city that got nuked yeah there we talked <laughs> how long that was you said, you said a couple days ago technically oh, like Two days, yesterday, today, today. today. Yeah. Okay. What'd you guys go do today? We went to Clearwater Beach. At where in Clearwater Beach did you do? Got drinks, we sat on the edge, and just had like a genuine like time and everything like that. And I thought it was going wonderful. What are you saying as he's going through traffic at 100 miles an hour, weaving in and out of cars? Anxiety attack. So you're just freaking out at the time? Did you say anything to him? Or? Like, I'm just like, chill. He's like, slow down. Like, what did he say? He didn't say nothing to you the whole time? He didn't say, we're gonna get away? He didn't say nothing? Do you know him to be somebody that commits a lot of crimes? Or anything like that? She's talking? known him for two days. Yeah. And he didn't say anything to you at all that he was wanted or he, anything? Is he wanted? I don't know, is he? Oh, I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> Did you notice that his, his tag on his motorcycle was bent like that? Yes. Just to let you in on a secret for us, if you see a tag like that, it means they run from the cops. Okay? So that was the original reason why we stopped him. And then he ran the red light. And then he took off. Because he does this all the time, I'm sure. So that's just a little information for you. If you see a tag like that, it's not Turn a good guy. Right. Just don't date a guy that drives a motorcycle. I mean, I feel like that's... If the dude drives a motorcycle that's top speed is 160 miles an hour, I doubt that he's going the speed limit. I like, I, I feel like a sports car is different because it's like you could also just drive a sports car and yeah, you might break the speed limit, but it's also safer to get in a car accident in and it just looks cool. Whereas if you drive a very expensive motorcycle... That's not like a Harley Davidson or some like motor gang motorcycle. You're only buying that because you want to go obscenely fast. Put yourself in a position like this. All right, Taylor. So, you know what happened? What happened? Uh, I was driving like a jackass and got pulled over. So, because you, you, you saw us there back on, on North Myrtle. What did, what did you do at North Myrtle? Uh, accelerator. What's that? Uh, accelerator. Well, first, like, you know, you were pulling up to that light. Why did you run in the beginning is what I want to know. Like, what what, in, what what, made you think I should run? I don't know, dude. Adrenaline. Do you usually do this over in Tampa or what? I mean, it, it doesn't get hold against you. I'm just asking. I'm curious. No, not really, man. Hanging out with a girl. Uh, trying to show off or something? Yeah. So trying to know? show off? Trying to show off going 135 miles an hour. What are they blurring? Probably his ID. What I did was stupid. Have, I'm have not, you ever or been like what he's writing about him. Arrested for fleeing before? No. Have you seen the videos of Clearwater cops catching motorcycles fleeing all the time? No. Do you remember running the red light at Chestnut? Uh, I'm not going to say because I don't know what street is what. I don't know the area. The too initial well. one where you saw this blue car behind you and you took off. Yeah. You turned, I saw, I saw Can't you. they hit him with kidnapping? No. Look back at us, and I think that's when it clicked that. We were... Appreciate your cooperation, but ultimately you fled from the cops. You got caught. Oh man, I know what I did. I'm not. I'm not trying to justify. All I, I asked was if um, 
asked the officer. Why do people keep saying Post Malone? Are you trying to say this guy looks like fucking Post Malone? He never gave me an answer. If I'm going to jail, if I could just use my phone to call my dad so you know, he doesn't go to sleep. Well, then you get to the jail. That you he get... looks nothing like Post Malone. Like, it's not even, it's not even resembling of Post Malone. What are you saying? Drewski? Phone number's out of your phone. Don't let you make a phone. So he'd still be away. Right. And just to get some more information on her, how do you know her? Uh, you met her through a dating app. Okay, and how long have you guys known each other? first time meeting up. What was she, what was she saying? I met her through Farmers Only. I met her through Christian Mingle. Uh, uh, when this was going on, uh, I couldn't hear her. Okay, did she did feel like she was freaking out, or was she just calm? What do you think the dating pool's like on Farmers Only? Is that still a website? I highly doubt it's farmers only. And what's the appeal in that? Like, who was like, yeah, we really need a dating app for farmers. I understand Christian Mingle. Like, I can understand, hey, like, you want to find somebody of the same religious beliefs as your own. But, like, I don't understand farmers only. That'd be like having, like, a, a fucking dating app for every profession. Uh, SoundCloud rappers only dating app. This is a dating app for Disney adults. Okay, see, that actually makes even more sense than Christian Mingle. Okay? I understand it, that that makes sense to me, if you want me to be real. I think if you find two people that are both Disney adults, there's like a one in two chance that they'll get married. All right, again, appreciate your cooperation, and, uh... Hang tight, boys, all right? Like, they'll just work. Yeah, it's in the front seat. The woman was released, while the man faced a felony charge for attempting to evade police at high speeds. Will this incident mark the end of his attempts to impress a date in such a reckless manner? Share your thoughts below, and remember to like and subscribe for more videos. I want to see what they said. If you're trying to get somebody hysterical to calm down, telling her she could have easily died is probably not the best way. Yeah, but I mean, the cop wants to let her know that, you know? The woman just went through a terrifying ordeal, possibly through a panic attack, and your bright advice is to tell her she could have died. I would have said the same damn thing. You want me to be real? Like, I know they're trained to calm her down, but I'd be like, yo, if, I don't if I'm a cop, and I just, I just saw somebody actually get pulled over going 130 miles an hour, and the girl's crying, I would have said, yeah, you could have died. That would have been the first thought that would have gone into my mind. I, I, even if she's freaking out, I would have been like, yeah, you almost died. Like, you, you, if you hit something, you would have been dead. You see that wall there? You would have hit that wall. They immediately treat the kidnapping victim. Is it actually considered kidnapping? Because if she did say, let me off, then yeah. As if she's guilty, she had no control over the driver's choice to flee it, yeah. Now, them arresting her, I feel like, is a bit insane. Or not arresting her, but handcuffing her. I know it's probably, like, protocol, but... When your date nearly gets you killed on day two, red flag. No, I think that's a green flag. The poor girl is a victim just as much as everybody else on the road. These cops could have handled the situation with her so much better. They fist bump each other when this girl is traumatized. That is facts. They did fist bump each other. They were like, good shit, bro. And they patted each other on the back. Good read, man. Good read, man. You getting on COD tonight? You getting on COD tonight, man? Joe Bartos for the sub. July uh, July for the sub. Rex Arena for the three. I've seen cops hand out skateboards for free. Cops should just hand out plate brackets for free since people use the excuse that they're on back order. Liz Needle and George for the sub. Fluffiest and Sinister are both Scrooge for the sub. Mason for the three. I don't know. I just think if you bend your plate up, I mean, that's why they thats why they originally wanted to pull him over. But if you bend your plate up, it's obvious that you run from cops. Like, there's no other, there's no other reason to do that. All right, hold up. I got to get a tip real quick. Not the cut video? All right, chat. We got a hard watch incoming. Yeah. Chatters are recognizing this. We have... We have a rough watch ahead of us.
Maybe they just don't want other people seeing their plate. What fucking logic is that? Oh my god. Dude. Infinite snot. Infinite snot. Doesn't stop. Oh, still gotta blow it again. Third time's the charm here, chat. Here we go. Next video. Really sad, though. Really sad. First dinner at this gorgeous restaurant in New York costed 320 bucks per- That looks abandoned. ...person. And this restaurant was ranked one of the best and most expensive places to eat on the planet. But are these super fancy restaurants even that good? I want to know, so I'll be dining- No. No. I- You- Yeah. Yeah, they're better than any restaurant you've been to. But comparably- is it worth, I think that a mid to high tier restaurant has better food than the fancy restaurants. The thing that separates them most of the time is the atmosphere. Like you're going to have better food at a fucking $400 a meal steakhouse than Longhorn Steakhouse. What makes that place better is that you don't have to deal with Or fucking stupid ass, oh my god, annoying motherfuckers, right? You go to a Texas roadhouse, are you going to have a great meal? Yeah. Is there going to be that fucking family that makes you want to fucking rip your eye sockets out? Yes, bro. Every time you go, it's going to be some stupid fucking family, man. I'm keeping it real. You don't see that shit at those fancy restaurants. You're not going to see... You're not going to see some fucking crying motherfuckers. You're not going to see some annoying ass people that are sending food back. Because you're at a fucking fancy steakhouse, right? You're at a fancy steakhouse. Everybody there is going to be like high-end clientele. It's going to be fucking dates. It, it might be a small family or a fucking group business dinner. It's not going to be annoying people, right? I went to a Texas roadhouse and I saw a guy send a steak back four times. And I wanted to say to him, you're not fancy. Stop acting like you have the fucking creme de la creme when it comes to taste. You're at a fucking Texas roadhouse. There's peanuts on the fucking ground, dickbag, okay? If you really want to fucking act like you know steaks, go to a fucking steakhouse, pal. Stop sitting here acting like Texas Roadhouse is the fucking shit. At some of the world Four times? Yeah, it was in Florida. I went to Florida. I went. I remember, got off the plane, went to a Texas Roadhouse. They were on a date. He would cut into the steak and be like, mm, send it back. And then after the fucking third try... The lady and the fucking manager came out and said, we cook it to a temperature, bro. This is a fucking chain restaurant. You're getting what you get, okay? And then he shut the fuck up. And he was trying to, like, impress his date. And I wanted to lean over to the woman and be like, yo, this guy's a fucking loser. It's most luxury. Like, <laughs> sending a steak back four times is dick shit. Because they throw it out. If the chefs aren't eating it, they throw it out. You're just wasting food. Right, if they really fuck up your shit, that's fine, right? Like, if you want to send that back. But if you get, if you order a fucking medium steak and they give you medium rare, you're, uh, in my opinion, you're an asshole if you send that back. Straight up. Straight up. I Just eat it, right? Don't go back, right? Don't go to that restaurant again. But eat the steak. Eat, oh, but it's a little, it's a little more wed than I would like. Don't order a steak. <laughs> Don't order a steak. Secondly, if you go to a steak restaurant and you order your steak well done, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. You don't know. I don't actually hate you, but you don't understand food. Okay? If you, if you, go, if you order your steak well done, you are a psycho. You, the, why? You just ruined it. Like, if you went to, like, the steakhouse I went to, if I had ordered that fucking $70 steak well done, they would have been like, really? ...restaurants to see if they're actually worth the price or if they're just a scam. Starting in Los Alamos, California. The uh, one-star Michelin restaurants behind me. This is Bell's, a French-inspired bistro. My parents forced me to have my steak well done. Why? Because of bacteria? I bet you eat dry chicken. Do you, are you not allowed to eat sushi because it's raw? Young and blunt for the sub, extinct for the four, Scarcore for the three. It's never worth the price. It's about the amusement to a degree. 
Not even about eating food to get full. It's the same shit with the designer brands where the price of the t-shirt's 400 when it costs 50 bucks to make. Yeah. Sash for the three. It's about the perceived value. Uh, rather than, like, the actual value. With one Michelin star. It's I like mine rare. I don't like mine rare. I'll get a medium rare steak. Medium, medium rare. If it's not a high-end restaurant, I'm gonna get medium. It's run by Chef Daisy Ryan, and it's got three dollar signs on Google. That means expensive. Okay, guys, seriously, look at this place. It's adorable. It's so tiny. Now, the Michelin star supposed- This doesn't look like a high-end restaurant. This is the whole- This is- This is a Michelin star restaurant. If I'm looking at this building, I'm going to I'm going to assume that they're going to sell me like the greasiest $10 burrito I've ever had. And I'm going to fucking love that shit. Okay guys, seriously, look at this place. It's adorable. It's so tiny. Now the Michelin stars supposedly represent the highest level of food and restaurant experience possible. That's Yo, somebody explain to me why a tire company rates restaurants? I don't understand that. I need to, I, I feel like I need to watch a history video on the Michelin system. Why the fuck, why, do, why does the, why does the tire company tell me how good a restaurant is? That's why eating at these restaurants comes with a very big price tag. But some people can say. Because it's the distance. Oh my God. How much you want to bet? It's, it, it's worth, the star is in relation to the distance and the wear and tear it's going to put on your tire. Would you, should you drive this far? Consider these restaurants overrated. There's only one way to find out though. So here's the thing. I've never actually eaten at a Michelin star restaurant before. So I have no idea what to expect. Good morning. So the inside of the restaurant was surprisingly pretty cozy and inviting. This is what a fancy restaurant usually looks like. Pretty lame, but here it feels like you're just inside someone's house. So I just sat down and this place is even cuter inside than it is outside. I ordered a cup of coffee since it was 11 in the morning. I feel fancy with my coffee. That's some good coffee. I needed that. Then I took a look at the menu and noticed there was an appetizer that cost in 90. Oh, chips and dip. Chips and dip. $90. Oh, caviar. Ah the fuck out of here dude i don't need to eat fish eggs 90 dollar fucking appetizer basically chips and dip it's an appetizer and potato chips that cost him 90 dollars feels a little scammy to me okay so my waiter said to get the santa barbara uni nah buy the, the chips and dip bro come on you're fucking doing the video buy the chips and dip content so i did I also got snails. The price definitely Ew. threw me off, but it's fine. What I was most worried about was this review I found from Deg O. Don't go here if you're hungry. This restaurant is stingy. Their entrees are tiny, and I mean microscopic. One star. It didn't take long for the food to come out, and at first glance, pretty small. These are just the app. Yeah, bro. See, that's just, I'm immediately. If I can one bite the fucking app, dude, yo. Like, that was $20. I don't know. That just that would just upset me. Oh, these are just the appetizers, though. Okay, that's a lot, though. <laughs> okay, that looks... I don't know if that's because he zoomed in, but that looks like a lot. So, hopefully, they taste good. This is the Santa Barbara Uni Caviar Panna Cotta. Fancy words. But very cute spoon. <laughs> if you didn't know, Uni is sea urchin. This ugly guy. I got a big scoop with my tiny spoon. I used to throw rocks at sea urchins, and I look back at it, and I feel bad. Because I didn't know they were living at the time. Because I thought they were just, like, spike balls. But then I found out they're, like, moving creatures. That's fantastic. What? Thank you for recommending this. So good, right? Have you tried the uh, snails? Let me know. Forgot I ordered snails. How am I supposed to eat it? Okay, so I'm supposed to get a piece of bread. I was told to eat a piece of bread and dip it in here. Oh, I do this. Ugh. The snails weren't bad. They were actually pretty good. With the appetizers out of the way, I ordered a few entrees. That way I could test. All right, I see the food coming out. It's the moment of truth. Is it microscopic? Oh, whoa. Turns out this may have been a mistake. Whoa. 
Okay, I don't know what that review was talking about. This is huge. <laughs> they got a whole ass fucking bowl of fries. That looks like good as hell. Don't tell me that's a bacon, egg, and cheese, man. I will fuck that up. I got this egg salad sandwich. Oh. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Pretty yummy. Egg salad? Ah! And this Yuck. giant pot of uh, mussels and fries. A lot of food. I was told to take the fries and dip it in the broth. That's the best dipping sauce for french fries I've ever had. The entire meal ended up costing $161.77, which wasn't too bad since I ordered a lot of food. Very good. Okay, now that lunch is over, I definitely see why this place has a Michelin star. My favorite part was the fact that this restaurant feels very cozy and very inviting. Honestly, y'all, I'm expecting something completely different from the two and three star restaurants. I am now in Terrytown in New York. Behind me is a 2023 Toyota Camry. The next restaurant that I'm going to is on a hill, so I have to drive there. I also brought my girlfriend. Hi, Carrie. Hello. So we're driving to the restaurant now, and I've only seen pictures of it online. But the thing is, it's on a huge farm, which is gonna be so different than the tiny one-star restaurant that I was just at. But despite this restaurant supposedly being amazing, there's a lot of bad reviews about it. It's like the most, it's the most expensive restaurant. He's like, sorry, babe, gotta film this one alone. Sorry, babe, can't come on this one. Only one guest allowed. I only reserved it. Apparently they only have, uh, they only have seats for one. <laughs> Apparently, apparently they don't allow couples to eat here. Wow. You know, if you wanted to sit on the other side of the restaurant, I don't know how I'd be able to pay for your tab on that one. I'll be here the three. I'm 13. I'm trying to get into working out, but need to be 16 to use weights at the gym. Any advice? Uh, you can do calisthenics, like body weight shit, pull-ups, push-ups. And I'm surprised that your gym doesn't allow you to, to use weights. Because I, I used to use weights at my gym when I was 13. Um... You could buy, like, at-home weightlifting shit if you want, if you don't want to do calisthenics. Uh, Matt for the three. Cooking like a chef of a five-star Michelin Bulgaria for the sub. Raffaello for the three. Never return an order ordered again at a restaurant. Worst case scenario, I'm going to just stop at McDonald's on the way home. Yeah, that's facts. Sir Fat for the three. When I was a kid, my brother, I've, I've, returned, I've returned stuff when they've given me the wrong order. That is, I've returned multiple things when I was like, this isn't what I ordered. Or if it was so disgusting that I was like, I can't eat this. Uh, Sir Fat for the three. When I was a kid, my brother told uh, me that fish eggs, I was just eating Nemo's family. Christian, Nikki, Valkyrie, uh, or Valkyrie, DC, Young, and Blanc for the sub. Extinct for the four, Scarker for the three. Uh, all right. No, but actually, I did go to a Japanese restaurant. No, it wasn't Japanese. It was a Thai place one time. And I ordered this thing that sounded so good. And they had a picture of it, right? And it looked so good. They bring it out. Yo, Daisy Showcase, I'll do it after this video. It smelled so bad, chat. I don't know. I don't even remember what it was. It, ha it was this bowl. And it had, like, pork. And then it, it, it was, like, an edible bowl. And it had pork. A bunch of soup and then like just onions and <laughs> the description did not match the description in the picture did not match what I was eating and chat it fucking stunk and I ate like half of it and then I just pushed it to the side they were like do you want to wrap it I went no <laughs> still tipped them well but I learned my lesson, man. I was like, I am never, I don't even know what it was, but I know if I read it on a restaurant, I would, I would recognize it. I would never order that pitch again. It was disgusting. It was the most foul thing I've ever had. Oh God. It, I, it, it tasted fine. It just, it, it smelled like they took the water on the floor and put it in the bowl, but it tasted good. I don't know what it was, but it smelled so fucking bad. Sora for the sub. How much do you tip? I would say I'm at least tipping 20%. But I would say I tip like the most I've ever tipped. I've tipped, I like there was a time that I got like a $10 bill and I tipped like 30 bucks. But 
for the most because it was, they were just a really nice person. But I would say, for the most part, if if, if the, say the bill's like a hundred bucks, I'm probably gonna tip twenty percent, but I might tip like twenty five thirty percent. Oh my god! Can't stop blowing my nose. I tip 65% when my meal is comped. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. There's been times where I've had my meal, like, percentage off or, like, they comped it. And I'll tip the bill. Like, one time I had the bill, like, it was, like, a $60 meal. And nothing was wrong with it. They were just, like, I, I comped the bill. Where was that? The guy recognized me. And he was, like, I'm going to comp the bill. And I was, like, thanks. And I just tipped him what the bill was. Like, I was like, if you're going to comp the bill, I'm just, I'm going to pay you what I expected to pay. Socks for the sub. I'll do Daisy Showcase after this chat. Hold up. About this place. After we this finish guy, the video. Frank even said the restaurant was a big scam, but I will be the judge. In the UK, of you don't have to tip? Yeah, because your, your country pays waiters a wage. Uh, socks for the sub. That. We made it. Y'all. This place is huge. This is Blue Hill at Stone Barn. All I'm going to say is if. Like, I know some people don't like tipping, and they're like, well, the restaurant should pay them. But they don't, is my response, right? So at least, you know, try and help out. And then another common thing is, I don't have the money to tip. Mm, then you don't have the money to go out. Mm, then you don't have the money to go out, is my response, right? Uh, if you can't tip even 10, if you're tipping 0%, don't go out. That means you are in a financial struggle. So even if you're tipping zero, you still shouldn't be spending the money that you're spending out. I hear stories from like waitresses I know or Brooke or other people that had previous wait waiter or waitresses jobs where people order $300 of food. They'll say, wow, you're a great waiter. Tip a fat zero or like 10 bucks or 20 bucks. Because there's like this, this, there's this like ideology that people have where it's like, uh, what, there, there's never worth more than a $20 tip. Dude, if you buy $500 of food and you're a group of 10 people and you tip $20 on the fucking whole bill, you're a douchebag, right? Because they waited on you for fucking three hours for 10 people. A two Michelin star restaurant focused on farm to table style food owned by chef Dan Barber and it has $4 signs on Google. Things are getting more expensive. Our reservation actually- They started. include service. On the assumption that you're going to tip them, right? <laughs> On the assumption that it's they're, they're serving you, right? Yeah, it's their job. But they get paid like $4 an hour. And yeah, if they get paid under that, they get minimum wage. But waiters shouldn't get minimum wage. They get like less than that sometimes, right? It's their job. They have to. Yeah, you're right. It's just, when people say that, it's like the conversation's over. We're, we have a disconnect in logical trains of thought here. If I say you should tip, right, they're waiting on you, and you're like, it's their job. Okay. Yes, it is. And? Like, if you go to a, if you go to a fancy restaurant, and the waiter is like, Hand and foot helping you. I've seen waiters wipe the crumbs off the table. Check up on you every 10 minutes. Right, bring out shit. They'll give you fucking free dessert. They'll fucking, they're trying to like make sure everything's good. They'll accommodate everything for you, right? And you're like, it's their job. And you tip a zero. Oh, when I tell you they hate you, right? Fine, tip a zero. Say it's their job. Every waiter you've ever sat with hates you. If they ever see you again, they will not be nice to you. Fish for the sub. And you could say, well, that's fucked up. Yeah, well, it's fucked up. You're tipping them a zero. A walking tour of the entire property. But before we get into all that, there's some reviews I got to look at. So this first review. Like if you have a valet and they get your car, right? I've never used a valet, but I'm going to use this as an example. You have a valet. They pick up your car, right? When you, when you park, right? They go park your car. They make sure your car's safe. You come back. They bring you your car. Are you going to tip them? 
if your answer is it's their job, oh, like they just they drove your car half a mile, fucking parked that bitch, locked it, brought it back, kept your key safe, remembered your face, your name, fucking put effort in to just show like, dude, you got a tip of valet. Or like an Uber driver. Like if you're somebody that's not going to tip your Uber driver, oh my god. You is from it's their job. You could say that about anything. Kale Smurf. What I will say is if it's Starbucks, right, and you order some fancy drink, yeah, I might tip, right? But I'm going to say this. If I go to a fucking, like, place where it's, like, kind of like fast food, and they just take my order, and they give me that shit, and they flip that screen, and it says tip 10, 15, 30, I'm going to hit a custom, and I'm going to tip two bucks. I, I'll tip you a little bit. I'm going to say in that scenario, I respect a no tipper because they're getting paid a wage. They're not getting paid. They're not getting paid like a dollar an hour, right? They're getting 15, 20 an hour and they're still trying to get a tip. And that I that in that scenario, I, I feel like you don't need a tip. Uh, what about DoorDash? You have to tip. DoorDash, I would tip 20 percent, just like some other shit, you know? One's literally just a picture of a especially if it's far like if you're door dashing a mile whatever but if you're door dashing some shit that's like six miles away seven miles away and they're driving to get it bringing it to you and then they have to go back to the other fucking area where shit is is door dash like uber well uber is they're bringing you somewhere door dash is they're bringing they're delivering you food somebody said hooker What's next? I gotta tip my prostitute? Come on, man. A cat? Come on, man. What society do we live in? Um. Well, pitch for the sub. And it's one star. So, it also has three thumbs up. So, I don't really know what that means. Is this cat on, like, the property? Why would you give a cat one star? Did it, like, bite you or something? I don't really know what to expect. But we're gonna, I, I'm gonna go walk now. So the walking tour begins at the restaurant's greenhouses, where they actually grow all of I own. know people that do Okay, we are off topic, but I don't give a fuck. I know people that DoorDash, and he- t Bro, I remember- I, I don't really hang out with him anymore, but- Dude, he told me- He was like, yeah, I've canceled my orders after they've delivered them. Like, I've said the food didn't arrive. I went, dude. Like, because sometimes they won't take a picture of the fucking order- like, like, eh, or some shit. I think they do that now, but he said, I don't know if he did it before then or some shit, but he'll say, he says he'll get the order and then say that, like, two-thirds of it's missing and get a refund on, like, most of the order. And I go, dude, that's, like, fucked up. Like, that's, <laughs> like, you get, you get it delivered and then you lie and say that, like, $20 of the stuff didn't show up. Disturbing for the three. Think of it as if you were serving a group of people, wouldn't you want to be tipped? Always tip. Yeah. Like, if you were serving them, if you were in their scenario, would you want them to tip you? Yeah. If you're making $3 an hour, and yeah, you'll make minimum wage if you make less than, te uh, less than that on tips, but you serve a group of 10 guys, and they tip you 4% on the fucking $500 tab, are you going to be mad? Yeah. Well, if you're going to be mad, if, if, if you're in their scenario, and you're not upset by what you're tipping, if you were them, then you're tipping enough. Right. But if you're there and you and don't lie to yourself, right? Don't say, Oh, I'd be fine if somebody tipped me five percent after serving on them for two hours. No, you wouldn't. You'd be mad. On vegetables. This was supposed to be very educational. But I'll be honest, I was focused on finding Mikhail's cat. Nothing so far. Pretty sure that's not a cat. What should you tip? Depends what country you live in. If you're in the US, twenty percent is usually the flat. At a restaurant, you're usually tipping twenty. Right. If they're a shitty waiter, you can tip 10, 15. You can tip zero if you really fucking hate them. But like, you got to keep in mind, a lot of people tip zero when the food's fucked up or they don't like the food. If the waiter didn't mess up and the food sucks, still tip your waiter because that's not their fault, right? Like if you order a steak and you don't like it and then you're like, ah, I'm going to tip zero. It was a bad experience. That's not the, that's not the fucking waiter's fault. That's the chef's fault, right? Who's probably not getting any of the tip. If he, if anything, he's getting a small fraction. Nothing in the Purpose distance the either. All right, I'm not, I'm done talking about tipping. 
so far, I'm not seeing any cats. There are cute pigs though, look at that. Oh boy, I just realized, now. are we gonna eat them? Once the tour was over, we were led to an area where there was an army of waiters and waitresses waiting for us. Well, How does this work? Yes. Okay, okay. I know, it's confusing a bunch of people. I'm intimidated. <laughs> So we just got seated and um, this place is crazy looking. The dining area was massive and very fancy. It used to be an old dairy barn for the Rockefellers who were one of the richest families like ever. God, dude, imagine standing for these photos, just stone cold. Everybody just looked so pissed back then. Just like ever. Just slightly out of place, because I'm just a boy. So at a dinner like this, the chef decides everything you're going to eat. This entire meal is supposed to be 20 courses, so I have no idea what to expect. But boy, was I surprised when the first dish ended up being straight up raw vegetables. Do I dip this? I don't know. I feel so lost. Now look, I don't hate vegetables, but this is not what I expect. I'd say, where's the bread, buddy? Bring it out. Where's that fucking fancy ass loaf? The fuck you giving me a carrot for? to pay a lot what is this bok choy take it back a lot of money for this is not off to the best start but it's fine let's check out the next review from nicole s okay starting off the concept is good the wait staff is admittedly impeccable and the service is absolutely designed to be catered to your every need however all of this is a little overwhelming. The wait staff moves in complete unison, and I'm not exaggerating. It's honestly kind of creepy and cult-like. One star. Yeah, I was gonna say, them waiting outside for me would kind of stress me out. Like, if I was not even in the building and the waiter goes, are you ready to eat? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you gonna throw me in the basement? What, what, what are you, what? You're freaking me out. For this, I'm just gonna be observing. Everyone, all of the wait staff in the restaurant, I'll let you know what I think. The review seemed very exaggerated at first, but after watching for a little while. Okay, that is freaky. I know it's not just me. Things feel a little weird. I mean, look at this dude's posture. It's perfect. <laughs> While I was people watching, a few other courses came out, along with this dude that sliced charcuterie at the table. That was pretty cool. Also got this interesting rainbow trout and swordfish pastrami dish. My girlfriend had a pretty accurate description for this. It tastes the way that leather smells. Is that- <laughs> That shit was probably like $20. Oh my God. It tastes the way leather smells. That is disgusting. Good or? Very good for me. I like it too, so I don't know. Wait, she's saying that's a positive. It's good that it tastes the way leather smells. I would say that that would be you saying it's bad. Then, a few moments later, they brought a dish called face bacon. I'm going to blur this for y'all. It was basically pork rinds, except served on a pig skull. The pork rinds didn't taste bad, but while I was eating it, all I could think about were the little piggies. And to make it even weirder- Oh my god, and they are, those are probably the ones that they fucking kill. You are not gonna believe what they brought nah, up. I'd fuck up those pork rinds though. Oh, pork rinds are amazing. Up next, this is pheasant, which is a type of game bird. It's supposed to be really tasty, and I was very excited to try it until they brought out a dead bird. Yeah, a dead bird. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the feathers. I wish I was making this up. How do you feel about now eating the bird after seeing that? I kind of feel guilty, but also... Yeah, they should have a restaurant where it's, like, called the Guilt Restaurant, and they bring out your meal, but before you eat it, they just show you a video of you, of them just murdering the animal. Just, that should be, like, a vegan restaurant. That would be a great idea. That would be a great idea for a vegan restaurant, where it's, like, you're allowed to order meat, and they'll cook it and bring it out. But, like, right before they bring it out, you have to watch, like, a fucking two-minute clip of them just slaughtering the animal. It was already dead, so I think I'd feel more guilty if I didn't eat it. Yeah, I'm okay eating it. But despite the interesting food choices... Where they build it up, like, you don't know. Like, the first minute's like, this is Bob. Bob the cow. And it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like, happy music. And then out of nowhere, they just fucking kill it. And they're like, this is what you're eating. I will say, the service has been literally perfect. 
almost too perfect though. Nicole's review was spot on. The staff was impeccable, but every single interaction felt rehearsed. Kind of like talking to an NPC. I also don't like when waiters come up to me too much. I want them to be there. Okay, I don't want to say I want them to have telepathy, but I want them to be there when I want them to be there. And then outside of that, I want them to fuck off, right? Like, I don't, I don't want them to, talk, like, I don't want to have a conversation with them, right? I want them to be like, what do you want? And then I'll say, and then it's like, it annoys me. It annoys me. Dude, such a first world problem. It, it annoys me when I'm like sitting there and I'm like, dude, I really need this for my meal and they're nowhere to be found or I want to refill on my drink or some shit and they're gone for like 20 minutes, right? But then when I don't want them to be there, it's like every five minutes, they're like, is the food good? Is, it, is, it, is everything? And I go. In a video game, if you know what I mean. Would you say it is slightly cult-like? Honestly, yeah, it does kind of give that vibe. They're a little sneaky. So dinner's wrapping up. We just had dessert. The thing is, now I don't know what to expect out of the three-star Michelin restaurants. The bill ended up being $1,052. Oh! Oh! Never! Never! Oh my god! No, yo, what the fuck? Holy shit! Holy shit. Yo, I was expecting like $300. $1,000 for two fucking people, bro. Oh my god. And they gave me pork rinds. I could have bought fucking chicharrones from fucking ShopRite. Yo, hell no. I'm not going there. No, dude. Wow. And 45 cents. And while there were some dishes I enjoyed... I feel like spending this much money on mostly vegetables and a kind of uncomfortable and, they, and then at one point they bring out the dead bird. <laughs> that is hilarious. Here's your little thing of pheasant under this. This is a dead bird. They're just holding it by its neck going. That'll be a thousand dollars, by the way. Experience was not my best financial decision. Oh, God. And you could be you're, you, he's going to be tipping two hundred dollars on that. Goodbye, Blue Hill Stone Barns. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, it's cold in San Francisco. Uh, for Dylan? Perfect. So this next restaurant is a pretty big deal. That's it that shit where that 20% tip would have me sweating. I'd be like, damn, dude, maybe, maybe, maybe the no tippers are right on this one. Thousand dollar bill, 20%, $200. Uh. It was once ranked the 28th best restaurant in the entire world. But after that last restaurant, I have no idea if I should expect good things. Thank you, too. Have a good night. All right, we made it. Wait, hold on. My brightness is low. There it is. Wait, this restaurant's going to be more expensive? Holy cow. I can't believe we're here. Welcome to Bennu. It's a three Michelin star contemporary restaurant focused on Asian cuisine. It's run by world-renowned chef Corey Lee. And you guessed it. It has four dollar signs on Google. But despite being one of the best restaurants in the world, the reviews are pretty harsh. Does this guy work for the restaurant? Is he just standing outside the brick wall, like fucking 80 fucking yards away from the inside of the restaurant? Who are you here for? Dude's just got a stool. He's the valet. The best restaurants in the world. Dude, but this is just the middle of a road. World. The I don't think that's a valet. You usually have more than one guy pretty harsh okay because if that's the valet then you're just leaving like and then nobody else is there to says, watch the seasoning was not delicious the table attendant repeatedly took the food in the middle of eating one star or this one from ranting yow the food was creative but not to the three star level the service was awful you have to wave to get the waiter's attention to add water or change plates for you one star i'm gonna be honest i don't know where else this guy is eating but he seems picky. Lastly, we have one from Jody. I made a reservation for four people, but had to change it. They got mad. I had four CEOs of top Silicon Valley startups with me. Bad service all around. One star. She was angry when she wrote this. It's time for my reservation. Uh, here's the thing. I actually made the reservation for two people, and it's just me. Nah, today. no lie. I, I would say if you're changing a, a fucking reservation at a Michelin star restaurant, I can understand them getting mad. And you saying that they're CEOs of Silicon Valley? Who gives a fuck? Ah! Oh, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fucking rat's ass who the fuck you are, buddy? 
You're getting the same damn service. I hate when restaurants start, like, praising people when they're, like, famous or some shit and giving them better service. Bitch, you could be Elon Musk walking into that restaurant. You should get the same damn service as everybody else that's fucking in that restaurant. They got mad. Oh, oh, you're CEO of Silicon Valley? Leave. I had four CEOs of top Silicon Valley startups with me. Bad service all around. One star. She was angry when she wrote this. It's time for my reservation. Uh, here's the thing. I actually made the reservation for two people, and it's just oh. me today. So, yeah, time to see if they'll get mad at me. Yeah, after that $1,000 bill, he told, he told her she couldn't come. Oh, my God, I need another tissue. No, I'm going to freak out. I hate being sick. We got so many more videos today, too. God damn. Hello. It's for two, but it's just me tonight. Is that okay? I was immediately taken and asked to sit in a waiting area while they figured out my reservation. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. I was a little worried this was going to be a problem. But after a little while. Okay. So I just got seated. Too Nobody... close. Too close. Hate restaurants like that. Don't like the long booth shit. Don't like the long booth shit. I don't want to be at the same seat as somebody else. That annoys me. Have that sectioned off. If I could slide over to them, that bothers me. Okay, so I just got seated. Nobody got mad. So, we're good. So after being seated, I was immediately handed a hot towel. Very fancy. Oh! Here's a warm towel. What the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Why do they do that? Why, and when I went to it, dude, at resorts, they do it. At fucking restaurants. Oh, here's a warm towel. I don't need a fucking warm towel. Take, I don't want it. And they, like, push it on you. Like, you have to take it or they're going to die. Right off the bat, guys, this place feels way less overwhelming than the two-star Michelin restaurant. It feels kind of laid back, which is surprising. It's still fancy, but, like, not intense fancy. It is a little awkward eating by myself, though. That's the other camera. Now, even though I'm pretty happy with everything so far, there are three main issues with this place. I've already proved the first one wrong. They didn't get mad at me, so that's good. We'll see if the others are true, though. Now, dinner at Bennu starts with a few small bites, like this thousand-year-old quail egg with ginger and <laughs> cabbage juice. It didn't sound super appetizing at first, but it's plated very cute. Hmm. My initial thoughts? Absolutely amazing. Then uh, the no. waitress recommended no, no, thousand year old egg. Mended some fancy sake. I ordered it, but it turns out I don't like sake. I hate sake. It's oh my god, I've only had it once, and I thought I would love it because people always are like sake bombs, sake. Yeah, it's the fucking shit, dude. It is disgusting. It's rice alcohol. Oh my god, I had a glass of sake at this fucking uh, hibachi place. And I was like, I'm going to love this. I take the first sip and I fucking gag. Not because it's like strong. It just tastes so bad. Soju's better. I've never had soju. Dude, I don't know what it is. Like, it, like I, could fucking, I could fucking sip vodka and I wouldn't have gagged. It would have been disgusting. I would have gone, but like, dude, it tastes awful. It's fine though. I started chugging water to get rid of the taste. Time to see if my water is going to get refilled. Nineteen seconds. <laughs> so it seems like Bennu is off to a great start. Two of the harshest reviews are already busted. Now the next course is a crispy fried frog leg sautéed with chilies. This is that actually does look good though. A first. It kind of tastes like chicken. It's perfectly fried and so juicy. Now just like Blue Hill at Stone Barns, a majority of the next dishes were small bites. But the flavors of these were on another level. I especially loved these. No, but that's like that thing they do at Nobu. Oh, what is that called? It's where the chef serves whatever they want.
Oh, what is that called, chat? Why are we doing the shout for 10 tacos? Th oh, th oh, he raided. Thank you for the raid. I thought you guys were just randomly doing that. Thank you for the fucking raid, 10 tacos. Right for the five. Imagine spending 1k on a dead bird. Hi, and it wrapped up for the sub corrupted for the three. Whole video feels like the menu right now, like uh, the waiters and the food dishes. Lucas for the three. Uh, in Germany, it's so different. Basically, you tip like four to five euros on every bill, except if it's like 200 euros. Immerse for the four. Sorry for the low bits. Don't apologize. Uh, moved to another province a few months ago and have made a few friends. Wanted to say thank you for keeping me company with your streams. Dub. Purpose for the sub disturbing for the three. Uh, I already read that. Yo, I'm literally trying to find what it's called. Omakase. Do you guys know what that is? They do it at Nobu. I know. I don't know if they do it at other fucking restaurants, but it's basically like the chef just brings you whatever the fuck he wants. You, you just pay like a two hundred dollar flat fee, and then he just brings you like ten small meals, and you don't know what you're gonna eat. And so, like, if you have, if you're like open to trying new shit, it's pretty cool. Right, because they just kind of do whatever they feel like. Yeah, it's like it's it's like chef's choice basically, but over not just one dish. It's like 10, 12 things that are probably the size of that. Pine of mushroom like Zhao Long Bao's, which made a wave of nostalgia just hit me. I used to eat these all the time as a kid, and it's the first dish that genuinely made me a little emotional. Oh my god, those were amazing. I'm pretty sure they almost made me cry. <laughs> So now that two of the bad reviews are completely busted, there's only one more to test. So this next course was very big. Dog, I respect him doing, like a lot of people sit here and are like, oh, this is great because he's making the money on the content and he gets to like record this and share the experience. I just don't think I would ever be able to do this because then you're not even focused on enjoying the food. You're focused on making the video. Like that's why like people ask me why I do story times instead of vlog. Because when I go on a fucking week trip, if I'm vlogging the entire thing, I'm not having fun, right? I'm working. And I know it's like, oh, you're working, but you're at an island. Yeah, but you're still, your primary focus is I need to make content rather than I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want and enjoy the moment and then just tell my chat afterwards. Yeah, it's not as good content wise, but my own experience is better. Hazard for the sub, 10 tacos for the three. Going to a cousin's birthday party, have a good stream. Dude, see you later. It was a variety of have fun. little dishes that could be mixed and matched together. There was half-dried fluke with seasonal vegetables, marinated raw spot prawns, cabbage minari kimchi, rice, and a bunch of other stuff. I get to essentially eat this however I want. I can make little wraps. I can add the rice and eat it with the fish. It's, it's, a, it's a DIY meal, of course. This is the best opportunity for me to test Kiyoka's review. I spent an aggressively long time eating all of the food, and while I was mid-bite, a waiter actually came up to me and said, Now, did you want some more rice there? Um, sure, yeah. Okay. Understood. I'll let Chef know, okay? Awesome. Thank you. I'll Turns let Chef know. They did the exact opposite of the review. Fantastic. Appreciate it. And once I stopped eating, because of the reviews, I expected them to take the dishes away, but they didn't. They let me finish the food. Bad review number three, debunked. The last two courses were both desserts. Still have no idea how I finished these. I was stuffed. So dinner's wrapping up soon. Yo, you and... know the one dessert that I could eat for the rest of my fucking life? Mochi. That shit is amazing. You have, like, it's like that, like, th oh, my God. I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's ice cream in the middle, but it's got that fucking, like, rice pudding on the outside or some shit. Oh, my God. Hazard and Cooper for the sub, little for the three. Always positive vibes. Keeps me happy on sad days. Your chat's always a dub. Thank you. I have some thoughts. Mochi's mid? No. So far, the I hate the texture of mochi. I love the texture. I think that's in part why I enjoy eating mochi. Is because just the dude. It has been unreal. This is dramatically different than all of the other restaurants I've ever been to in my entire life. The total cost of eating here was one thousand ninety nine dollars and ninety. Oh, and that's only one person. Four cents. Which... That's not worth it. It's not. Like it's a cool. Yeah, maybe like one time ever. I could see that. Like, it's an experience to do one time. 
But I, if like there's, if you're like, hey, let's go here fucking once a month, I'd be like, yo, you are insane. Yes, is a lot of money and did stress me out. I still thought the creativity behind the food, perfect service, and just overall experience was definitely worth it. They also took me back into the kitchen to meet the chef. That was very cool. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, that's nice. Dude, he's also like, a, like that's kind of like a risky bet. I mean, he made the money back. But that's a risky bet on that YouTube video. Uh, I mean, did he make the money back? Dude, he probably spent like three grand. He might have not made the money back yet. I don't know. It's also a fairly new video, but fucking W YouTuber. Dylan. Is that just his name? It's just Dil oh, Dylan Hyun. I ate at America's most unique restaurants. Ugh, fuck. See now, now we gotta, now we gotta add that to the watch later. <laughs> now we gotta add that to the watch later. W video though. Right. This is a one-year-old. Jesus. Michael for the sub. Cooper for the sub. Sleepies for the three. Uh, hello McBart. Hello Bart McFart. What's the fanciest restaurant you've been to? Uh, I went to a Jeff Ruby's one time. And had a four hundred dollar steak before a wedding. Baboon for the sub. When I was like fourteen or fifteen, uh, I that I went. Oh, I had to do the Daisy Showcase. Okay, you're right, chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a Wagyu. It was an A A five Wagyu. Uh, all right. Count me down, chat. I gotta go grab my dog. All right. Stop. Oh, you are happy, Fo. Oh, you are happy, Fo. Come here. She got a new collar. Oh, can you guys hear me? She got a new collar. She's a pink collar now. Oh, short Daisy showcase there. Ugh. Jacks for the sub, baboon for the sub. All right. Lock in here, chat. Next video. We're also fucking two hours into stream already. Jeez. Stream's flying by. Ugh. Somebody said alcoholic. Why? Because I have that uh, Tennessee whiskey down there. <laughs> Tennessee honey. Oh, does that bother you? That that bot you gotta realize that bottle's been there for probably like six months. It's whiskey. It's not it's not gonna go fucking bad. Uh Andreas for the three. Uh odd question. Jax for the sub, uh P for the sub. Alright. Uh ages one to one hundred, try Apple Vision Pro. Uh and then we uh have like fucking five more videos still. And this is a one hundred year old. This is a one-year-old, and this is a 100-year-old, and this is every age in between, trying Apple's new Vision Pro headset that set- A 100-year-old using Apple Vision Pro? <laughs> Fucking, like, absolutely terrified. Michael and Jesse for the sub. It changed the world this year, but the world is a big place. Will it? Hi, Dad. Starting with a one-year-old. The one-year-old seemed amazed, but I think he would have been amazed by anything. What he 
doesn't realize is this device is like magic. It works by tracking your eye movements while you're wearing it. So if you just look at something, it selects it. And when you want to click a button, Wait, but then how do I, how does it, how does it know if I want to select it if I just look at it? Just looking at it doesn't mean you want to select it. Button, you just... How much is the Apple Vision Pro? Isn't it like $3,000, $4,000, $3,500 or some shit? Do that. It's that simple. Okay, you're in. And now she's watching Cocomelon. This was her idea, not mine. And while we have the young kids watching Cocomelon... Does it feel like you're really there? No. The older kids got to experience Mr. Beast in a more immersive format. Now you could take him everywhere Mr. you go. Oh shit, I'm watching Mr. Beast on the mountain! Oh! I'm on the top of Mount Everest watching Jimmy! This is iPad kids taken to another level. And they all seem to love it. Wow. It should land on you. Yeah, so weird. Yeah, this is pretty cool. How would you rate the realism on a scale of 1 to 10? It looks really real. The thing that makes this headset different from other headsets is that it mixes your reality with the reality in the headset. So it doesn't just show you what's in the headset, it actually adds what's in the headset to the real world. And to make it even more immersive, the headset actually creates shadows on the ground of what you're seeing. It looks insanely real. It's a little frightening, in my opinion, how good it this is. Sh it adds shadows based on the screens. Technology is. But despite what Apple claims, the blue lights on the outside are oh, never not weird. I look like a space person. This does feel a bit like a dystopian future piece of technology. It's strange. Because of how controversial all of these features are, after each person finished with the Vision Pro, we had them all take a vote. They hit the green button if they believe this product is good for society, and the red button if they think it's bad. As the video goes along, we'll see which age is- Nah, I feel like they should have an indifferent button, too. All the old people are gonna say bad. I think younger people are probably gonna say good. Say what? And by the end of the video, we'll know what overall won. I think it's just, like crazy. It's good. I can watch Skibbity Toilet! Yes! Good! We also asked each of them questions about what they just saw. If I could use one word to describe the Vision Pro, it would have to be immersive. Realistic. Cool. It was pretty cool. It was very cool, but. As you can imagine, the one-year-old didn't say much because he can't speak yet. But it wasn't until age 18 where we got some true skepticism. I don't really know how I feel about this. I would like to try a different headset, maybe an older one, see how it compares. Well, luckily we can do that. We have a headset from Meta, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, you remember that dickhead that asked me to fucking use the Meta Quest? He was like, he was like, oh, maybe your Valve headset isn't good. You got a Meta Quest. No. Whatever you want to call it, and you can take the Apple Vision Pro off. One thing of note, this headset costs one-tenth as much. That's actually crazy. One-tenth as much. Honestly, it is lighter, and it is honestly a little bit more cushy. So if you had to give Apple a tip based on using this, I'm curious, what would it be? Improve your head strap situation and make it lighter. Because if I wear that thing for more than <laughs> 10 minutes... Yeah, but then it's just like the downside... The upside to Apple is you don't have to fucking carry those dumbass fucking controllers. And you're like... Fucking grabbing it with the controller on. I'm gonna get a headache. Hopefully the old people don't okay. have that problem or they're gonna want to rip it off. This is crazy, man. One of the most interesting parts of the Vision Pro is FaceTime. Because if you think about it, when you're wearing it, there's no way for them to see your face. Because there's no cameras here. Cameras are all pointing away from you. So how do you do it? Well, before you FaceTime someone, you can do a 3D scan of your face. So when you do FaceTime, then they'll actually be looking at a photorealistic... Or you just FaceTime them on your fucking phone, right? Or, or you just FaceTime them on your fucking phone. It's just fucking stupid. It's, it's, not, it's an unneeded addition. 3D model of your face. Let's try it out and do the scan. The FaceTime looks dumb as hell. Now slowly turn your head to the left. I saw the clip of that. <laughs> Where that one kid's like, I'm currently FaceTiming on Apple Vision Pro. Did you know? I'm like, yeah, dude, you look like a skinwalker. Now, tilt your head up. Whoa, is this what I look like? One side. I'd finished my scan, I decided to FaceTime my mom, see if she'd notice the difference between my 3D model self and my normal self. That looks terrible. <laughs> my brother sent me a video of what they saw afterwards. It looks nothing like it. Hello, mother. We don't just like to FaceTime our parents. Do you notice anything different? Yeah, you don't look human. On this channel, we like to FaceTime celebrities. Here we go, the do. All right. So I had my friends try it to see what they'd say, but none of them picked up. We're now through age 25. I wonder how these answers will compare to the older people coming later. I miss him. 
Trust me, this video is- Bro, oh my god, they're gonna bring back the husband. Only going to get more interesting as the people dad. get older. But none of this matters if you can't actually live in the Vision Pro. We've had everybody try to do different tasks within the Vision Pro. What I want to have you test... What's the table for? <laughs> the table is for you to make peanut butter and jelly to see if you could actually do an everyday normal Dude. task in the Vision Pro. The like, thing is, like, I, I feel like I'm, lo I'm looking at my hands. It feels like I'm looking at my hands. Okay. So I'm taking out the bread. Yeah. The bread looks good. Dude, I think... No like my Wait, is it? You're not... Lo it's not just transparent. It's like he's looking at a video of his hands right now. He's not actually looking at his hands good actual bread for this really this looks like it's gonna be easier than i thought i thought you were gonna be like spilling the jelly everywhere i, I feel like this is like the ultimate test for the video too of like can you actually live your real life in it or not everyone else is just guessing. oh i didn't clean the fucking knife oh now there's peanut butter in the jelly I feel like you can. It takes a little bit getting used to, like, the emotion of it. But in terms of, like, the physicality, it's it's easy to spread jelly on this, but it's looking at you feels weird. The thing is, this technology is coming. Whether or not we're ready for it to be good or bad, I'm hopeful it's good. So for that, I'm going to click the green button, man. That's so cool. Thank the votes you. were starting to come in and the results were mixed. I don't think it's the best for society. I feel like a lot of people don't live in the moment as it is, so I would say no. <laughs> if I gave this to my grandma, she would freak out. <laughs> I don't know what the results are looking like right now. I'm having my friend Isaiah tally them up between green and red, so he's the only one that knows right now. Me, personally, I voted green earlier when I tried it because I thought it was pretty- Yo, can we run a poll on whether or not this is good or bad for society? I want to see what my chat thinks. But everybody here is young. Like, everybody here is in Gen Z, so his is probably going to be more accurate on the society's opinion because, like, no one here is, like, 85. Like, it's you, you kind of also need other older people's opinions. Like, there's probably... There's millennials here. If we're being real, there's millennials here. It, there might be a few parents that are watching. But I highly... I would say the majority of the people in this chat right now are between the ages of, like, 14 and 18. Most people are saying bad. Aiden for the sub, IB for the three. Show the old people skibbity toilet in VR. Max Arena for the five. I need a load of 10 grand. Levin for the sub, Aiden for the thousand. But he says, how do I sub? You get the sub button, bunk for the three. Can Biggie Cheese react to this one? Michael and I'm Cav for the sub, Jesse for the sub. Michael and P for the sub. Oh yeah, sure thing, man. Yeah, sure thing. Biggie Chee. Oh, no, that's Troy Bolton. Troy Bolton, <laughs> Troy Bolton reacts to this. I think this would really improve my basketball game. I, I think I need to get my head in the game here. No. That's Biggie Cheese. We're not getting a Biggie Cheese react today. Horror for the sub top for the three. Love sleeping to your streams because your voice is so calming and soothing. Okay, are you crazy? Michael for the sub. You think my voice is calming and soothing. Pretty cool, but maybe when we get the wisdom of the old people towards the end, it will change my opinion. Definitely not. Part of the routine we're having everybody go through is watching what's called a spatial video. Uh, it's very, very detailed. I spent the last week recording these 3D spatial videos on my iPhone, and while it's impossible to capture on camera, it's genuinely insane. Whoa. Everybody keeps reaching out to touch them. I think it's a 3D movie at a theater. Oh my god, water, rocks, okay, I'm in the water. Super realistic. It's a little scary, actually. I never saw Interstellar, but I would love to see it in 3D IMAX. Now I can, in the Vision Pro. So if you want to watch something at home, or if you want to uh, try video games, Yes, absolutely. If I had to use one word to describe that. Yeah, you know the most disgusting thing ever? When they have VR headsets at fucking arcades. Like hooked up to a video game and I see people using them. I just I just want I just want to be like, yo, five thousand people have worn that headset. And they are not cleaning them. Like they're rarely like they're not cleaning those bitches. Like you're gonna get lice or you're like do pink eye whatever dude oh my god just putting on a vr headset that you don't know who fucking wore that shit michael for the sub apple vision pro i would just say i mean i bet they clean them but not often interesting it's like you're really there they clean them before you get on no they don't because whenever i'm there there's no one at the vr fucking arcade area you just put your chip in and put the headset on and play the game nobody's there cleaning it before every person puts it on
But you know you're not. Rock age 33. Some people think it's bad for the world. Some people think it's good for the world. I think it'd be really good in schools. It would really help kids to envision and feel like they're a part of history. It would not help with school. It would not. I, what the hell? How the hell would the Apple Vision Pro help with school? You're going to put them. She said help them envision. What are we going to throw them into the Gettysburg battle? We're going to have everybody throw the VR headset on and watch people fucking reenact the Gettysburg War? Like, like what the fuck is happening? How is that helping? So, yeah. That's the ethical question, right, that we're finding out. Um, I don't think it's good for society. I don't think it'll drift as far as it's part, so I'm going to say uh, that's a hard no. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, great. I just want to let you guys know, I have never made a video like this before, ever. I don't even want to let down. <laughs> this is crazy. So please subscribe, because this is very scary for me and very difficult and costed me thousands- of 40 year olds vomits. <laughs> I have motion sickness, by the way. It just fucking starts puking. Of dollars. As the ages kept getting older, the people started considering how the Vision Pro could affect their jobs. I think there's so many things you could do with this. As a stand-up comedian, I feel like you could start streaming shows through VR. Virtual meetings, you feel like... As a stand-up comedian, I feel like you should start streaming shows through VR. What? How is that a societal application? What is that doing? You can wear a VR headset and watch a Netflix special? Wow, that's really changing shit. That's changing the game. That's not helping comedians. Melon for the five. I think she's saying you wear a VR headset and you'd watch like a stand-up comic, like live. But that's just weird. And then they're making jokes and they're not hearing laughs. That would just be the most dis like detached thing. It'd be like watching Full House. Glad uh that glad to see I got you streaming. It really helps me feel better. Dub Melon Boy. Westin game for the sub. Aiden Shark for the 5K biddies. Did you watch the Twitch event last night? No, I did not. Was it good? Did anybody else watch it? Michael for the sub top of the thread. I watched like the first 10 minutes and then I was busy. But I kind of wish I did watch it. I wouldn't have been able to stream it, though. They uh, Cutie allowed people to stream it if they weren't invited, outside of a few streamers that she gave permission to, because she didn't want people to get invited and instead of going to the show, stream it and, like, get views. And I was invited, and I didn't go. And it would have been cool if I went, but, I mean, I don't fucking know anyone that would have been there. Like, other than Handsome Fella. So, it just would have been awkward. You know? I feel like I would have been there. And then it would have just been like, alright, everybody's going to the after party. And then I would have been just... You know, there. Maybe I would have gone to an after party, but it just would have been, like, stressing me out, you know? Like, I can... I, I'm not stressed out by social situations where I don't know anybody. But I at least want one person I know. You know? I feel like I could have hung out with, like, Handsome. Like, that would have been fucking chill, you know? But if I was going to a party, like, I've, I, like I'll like i go to college parties, I'll go to shit like that. But, like, I would have to at least be with, like, one or two people I know. Ted Nevison was there? Oh, I could have met Ted. Yeah, that is cool. Fuck. I might go next year. If, they, if they're fucking running that next year and I get invited. But this year, I didn't go. I didn't really see it as worth it. Because I would have paid a fucking thousand dollars to fly out to L.A. To be there for a day. Pay for a room. Pay for food. Pay for all that shit. I would I would have spent... I probably would have put out like 2K to be there for a day and a half. Like that wouldn't have been worth it in my mind. You're in it. Wow. <laughs> and also art as well, being able to work in a 3D space without having to have any other tools except You're for rich, somebody said. Dude. Just because I make money doesn't mean I don't understand the value of money, right? Like, I just because I make a decent salary, not a decent, I make a good salary, right? Like, that doesn't mean that I don't understand what $100 is right 
Like, just because I make money now doesn't mean, oh, $100 isn't $100. It's still fucking asshole to money. Eat it! For the 5K biddies! What the fuck? Do you think you will be one of the people to be selected for something for the event next year? No. Like, will I be nominated? No. The categories that I would be nominated in are just chatting variety, mainly variety content and just chatting. And the streamers in that realm are way bigger than me, right? Like the people that got nominated this year were like Kai, Queso, and Hassan. They average like above 20K viewers. Like that, they're way bigger than me, you know? Uh, I think like, yeah, there's more niche platforms that like smaller creators win, but I, I'm not in that realm, right? I'm not in MMORPG, right? The VR in your fingers, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. All right, all right. It's very good for society. I think the Outvision Pro is good for society. I say yes. It's great for society. I'll go with green. Yes. It's good for society. I hope you add 20k viewers. I don't. I always say, dude, and some people are like, you're capping, man. You would love that. No, the fuck I would not. I, maximum viewers I would ever want to have is like 10k. Like, ever. Just because then you don't have an interactive chat. Like, Charlie's chat is somewhat interactive, but that is the only chat like that. Like, that is the only big streamer that I know of that has, like, an interactive chat. Like, anybody else above that view count, it's just fucking spam. Like, are there any big streamers live right now on Twitch? Hassan's live. Oh. It all makes sense now. Guys, Challenging the system that he's not a part of? Hold up. We're legally not allowed to make fun of sovereign citizens, actually. Like, yeah, look at his chat legally. just they zoom they by. To existing in this country. And it's just a lot of emotes. Yeah. And they're, they're also exercising their God-given And that's like slow. Freedom of, uh, Hold up. Uh, he has his in sub only. I need to find like a big just chatting. Screen. They're just fucking. <laughs> Papalite. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. Hat jemand dir aus Insta? Bro, shut the fuck up, Arschloch. Just like zooming, dude. What's this here? Can't interact. It becomes more of like a hive mind rather than like an actual individual viewership. That one guy, Def and Larry, for the sub. Uh, and Aiden, thank you for the bits, man. DXP for the three. I've had really bad mental health, and you've got me through that, so thank you uh, so much, Joe. You're amazing. Thank you. That Hi. woman is not 100 years old. I'm 50. I'm in the middle of 100. Before we really get going, a quick question. It's Do you have any fears? Uh, Queso interacts with chat. Queso's, Queso's good at it, but it's also really hard I don't know, man. Like the, I, I just feel like the reacts I do and shit. I, I, I just feel like it wouldn't work. And then it's also just fucking stressful. I can handle having 4K viewers. I could handle reasonably having 10K viewers. I don't think. I think me having, if I was Queso and I averaged 60,000 viewers, that would stress me out. That would stress me out. Like 4,000 people watching me right now. Like the most viewers I ever averaged in this stream is like 7K. Seven or eight K, I could fucking I could handle that, right? I don't I think I would be stressed if I had fifty thousand fucking viewers. Like that is so many people. Aiden for the fucking five K biddies again! Throw them in the chat! Stop sending bits, man! What the fuck? You should do a scary game that's rated really high because that seems fun to watch. What? I I play scary games every Wednesday. What do you mean rated really high because that seems fun to watch? I do scary games every Wednesday. Tomorrow, we're literally doing Killer Frequency, which isn't really scary. It's more Thriller. But we're starting with Minecraft. Tomorrow's Minecraft at 4.30 and then Killer Frequency. Tuesday, I'm not live. Wednesday, Wednesday we do, we're doing a Chill's Art game. Then Escape the Backrooms with Max. Thursday, we're doing Pacific Drive, which is like a survival horror. So we got a lot of horrors uh, this week. Uh, it's not really survival horror. It's like, I don't, I don't really know what it's called. Should you guys want to see the trailer for the game we're playing Thursday, by the way? A little pause on this video. The Olympic Peninsula, thing you need in the most beautiful place on Earth. There is no cause for alarm. Take shelter in the closest pocket of stability in your area, and please refrain from thoughts or memories of home. 
the chain of events were in plain sight. Strange accidents leading to the government's claim of eminent domain and subsequent seizure of the peninsula. The evacuation of 100,000 people and the attempt and abject failure at containing the rumors that spread like wildfire. Ten. It was hours before Arda came to extract us. Nine. Some zone secrets are best left secret. Eight. Seven. I don't even look up at the sky anymore. Six. Was she a myth? Murder? A monster? Five. Nothing had more potential than limb technology. Four. I don't know how good it'll be. Look what it did but to the we're gonna try it. The peninsula. Three. Two. One. I have the distinct honor to introduce to you the American people. A new scientific frontier with a raw... It's basically... Well, I think it's a PlayStation game, but it's literally on Steam. Uh, hold up. Let me literally fucking read this real quick. Pacific Drive. Yeah. Um, face the supernatural dangers of the Olympic exclusion zone with a car that is your only lifeline in this diving, driving survival adventure. Scavenge resources, load up to your trusty wag, wag station, drive like hell to make it through alive. It's a story-rich action sci-fi adventure horror. Wow. Not even horror. I doubt it's horror. It's probably thriller. Looking at it. Looks good, though. I mean, we're going to start... I don't know if we're going to play it all day Thursday, but we're doing that Thursday as well. Friday's React and next, uh, next Saturday is a Minecraft, Minecraft tournament. Video for the sub, Aiden for the five. Uh, Thank you for the fucking bits, Aiden. All right, lock back in. Hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Can good. Can you take game suggestions? Yeah, exclamation point Discord. Uh, I have a video suggestion tab and a game suggestion tab. That's what they're there for. It's how I find most of the videos that I watch and games that I play from you guys. Um, if you have any videos you want me to react to, I have a video suggestion tab, game suggestion tab as well uh, for any games you want me to play. How much longer are you going to be live? Probably like another hour and a half. Maybe a little bit longer. <laughs> Before each person put on the headset, we asked them be a longer stream. what their biggest fear was to see if they'd be willing to face it in the Vision Pro. I'm not big on heights and yeah, flying in a plane. Like, I very rarely fly. I've flown maybe twice in the last 25 years. Some of them even sent in videos before this to tell us what it was. Are you going to go live early for midwinter break? What the fuck is that? You mean like spring break? Chat, when is y'all's spring break? Every I, I feel I never stream early. I stream early on winter break. I stream early all summer. I don't stream early spring break because everybody's spring break is different. Like my spring breaks like early March. Some people's spring breaks in April. Some people's breaks mid March. Some people are off right fucking now. Like it it, it varies so drastically that it's just I, it, dude, it varies by state, city, fucking high school, college. It, 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 so I don't really, I don't really stream. I just do my regular schedule just because I don't, I don't want to fucking make it so pe people can't watch me. All summer though, I stream 2 p.m. ESC every day. Sometimes earlier. A lot of the time earlier. But no, that's just because it's summer. Finn for the three. I want to say you're a great streamer. I was wondering if you were sick. Uh, if you were, if you were you sick in your merch shoot. What? I'm afraid of heights. That's my biggest fear. And apparently Jack is saying that I'm going to have to face that fear tomorrow. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Dude. <laughs> the thing is, is I, I don't actually have to ever do this now. I feel like more like a hang glider. I feel like a bird. No, it's like more like a bird. Oh, my gosh. It's real and totally safe. I feel like old people are going to be the ones that actually find it the most fascinating. IB for the four. You going to do another merch drop in the future? Yeah, in like three, three months, maybe. But terrifying. You know what? Most definitely. Absolutely not. No, it's terrible for society. My biggest fear is that this world is going in a bad direction and that there may be a very different world for my grandchildren to live in, and that bothers me. So just line it up with your eyes, and I'm going to start pulling on this back strap, and you let me know when it feels comfortable. Or this is really tight. amazing. As we're getting older, I'm so curious. How is the hundred year old going to react? Ow, 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 ow. Oh, mm. don't touch me. Ooh, it's so real. Look so real. Yes. No more. <laughs> Humans are reaching a point now where it's do we continue to just technologically advance, you know? Like there's no definitive point of like, hey, where should we go from here? 
I think ideally human, the human race wants to get technologically advanced to where we can start spreading to different planets. I think that's the peak goal. And then it's just going to keep exceeding. And then I realistically, the end goal is like immortality, like to a degree, like just becoming like borderline a god. None of us are ever going to experience that. We're fucking late to the game. We're all, we'll all be dead, but uh, we're early to the game rather. But I think like people, like humans, like if the human race isn't dead or goes through some apocalyptic X event, I think like 5,000 years from now, humans could be like almost immortal, like borderline robot, like not, not humans or robots, but like they're, it's, it's indiscernible from or not indiscernible very discernible from humans now like i think humans five thousand years from now if they're alive would look back at us and be like that's not even human right like what they're going to decide as humans cyclops are the sub raider for the three me and my girlfriend broke up yesterday i feel lost don't know what to do the reason we broke up is she got caught cheating she fucked my best friend and i just don't know what to do uh well stop interacting with your ex-girlfriend now uh and stop interacting with your best friend uh, work on yourself, give yourself time to heal, and you got to move on. Uh, that's all you can do. Sorry you're going through that, though, bro. Genuinely. <laughs> I think it absolutely will be good for society. Another thing we asked them to send in before they got there was their thoughts on the headset before trying it. Virtual reality. That might be the way to go for me. I might be able to do so many more things in life. I'm very interested in seeing where this goes. This is so beautiful. I have been a flight attendant for 38 years. I have always wanted to fly and I don't need on an airplane. <laughs> I feel like it's, I could stand up and die right now. Yeah, a few dinosaurs that are playing. Uh, spectacular. Yeah, can we jump scare the people over the age of 80 and see if one of them has a heart attack? Is that fucked up? Just, like, make them watch, like, one of these, like, happy videos, and then it's just gonna be, like, one of those fucking scary, like, corpses that just goes, ah, fucking in front of their face. Who knows how a hundred-year-old will react, you know? I don't know. We're on to 75 now. The data's coming in, and it's definitely seeming pretty even on both sides as we get older. I think it'll be okay for society. I see the movie Oppenheimer. It's like being back in the theater again. 100%. Fantastic. This is a necessary evil. Wow. Yes. I had trouble using it. I think it's the future. I had to. Okay, that is not technologically advanced. That's fucking stupid. The, <laughs> the idea of having to use your finger to draw something is just so dumb. Like, just draw something. I had to redo my painting on the canvas. I think the innovation is spectacular. I kept thinking, how is this done? Improving a life. Yes. They, they do look very 3D, I have to admit. And the sand that someone's throwing is, is, that's totally cool. I remember when 3D came out. This is like 10 times that. The trouble with AI, all those kind of things. Yo, I remember the first 3D movie I ever saw, bro. That shit was life-changing. You walk into the movie theater, they hand you those red and blue glasses. You're like, yo, what's about to go down right now? Fucking watching that shit just reaches in front of your face. You're like, oh, shit. Max for the five gifted. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the five gifted. And Max for the thousand fucking biddies. Cool for the thousand biddies. This funny YouTube guy. Cyclops for the sub. If they could impact people's jobs, so many people could lose their jobs. Uh, huh. He said, yes, yeah, it's good. I wasn't able to use it. It was too difficult. We ran out of time. Oh, that's my daddy. I wasn't able to use it. It was too difficult. Common old person. Wow. I don't think I've ever wow. seen him that close up at that age. So, what's the conclusion? Well, the votes look like this. The older people got, actually, the more excited they were about the technology. It's moving. That's neat. Like he's talking. But in the end, the final result was green. It's a perfect- You know a worry I have? If we're, we're having a real heart-to-heart -heart here, chat. Um... I worry that when I'm old, I won't remember my grandparents 
or my parents in the way that I do now. Like, when I'm 60, if I, hopefully I fucking live to that, you know? But when you're, like, that old, I feel like asking my grandparents about their grandparents, they can give me info, but it's like, somebody just said, I will remember you, Joe. That is not even at all of what I'm talking about. Kobe just said, nobody cares. Kobe, we'll see you never, buddy. Uh, bye. Uh, but no, like, I mean, that's like a fucking real thing, dude. Like, because w when they die, it's like 20 years from then. It's like, fuck, dude, that was like a long fucking, like, they've been gone for a while, you know? Like, and at that point, you're, you, all, the only memories that you have are going to get more and more distorted. Because as you remember things, they get more distorted. Like, your childhood memories aren't actually what happened. They're memories of a memory of a memory of a memory. And then it's like playing fucking telephone with yourself on what you remember, right? Like, if you have a memory and you don't think about it for a while and then you remember it again, what you remember is different. Perfect product. There's nothing wrong with it. It's lovely to see him. He looks very happy because it's... You think it's his wedding day. I miss him. And, uh... It's nice to be able to see him at that time in his life. Yeah, I wasn't around at that time to Wow, that's really great. Huh. I think about that a lot, dude. Like, you you not existing and your parents living their own lives, not even thinking about you, right, at all. Just being them. And that's, like, what we're doing now. Like... If I if I have a kid in fucking eight years, right, when they're 20, they're going to look back at me now, and I'm not even thinking about them. But, like, there will be a moment where I can literally create a conscious being. That's fucking insane. And I saw this one clip of Seth Rogen. You guys probably know Seth Rogen. He said he's never going to have kids, and he's, like, 40. And I could, like, respect that decision. Like, it's your life, you know? But I always just think to myself, like, if I never have kids, I am cutting off the entire potentiality for anyone to exist from me. And you could say that's, like, selfish, but it's also, like, your parents could have created billions of different combinations of people, right, that wouldn't be you. You are so lucky that you're one out of a million DNA combinations and you exist, right? So to not have any kids removes that potentiality for anyone, right? And it's like whatever, but like it's your fucking life. But I just can't be like, like Seth Rogen's not having kids. When he dies, that is everything of him gone forever. Like he just cut the line, right? For thousands billions of years creatures have created other creatures and they've evolved right and then they've become humans and then those humans had humans and those humans had humans and those humans had and then you exist and the moment you say i'm not gonna have kids you've cut that line infinitum right it's done ever like you you've gotten to that point and then it's done like, everything before you is gone. You ended the bloodline, effectively. Yeah. Ethan for the sub. It's, like, not that crazy. Like, when I say it, it seems simple, but it's just weird to think about. That, like, th like thousands, millions, billions of years of creatures have existed that have made you. And then when you don't have a kid, it's done. Hi, Dad. I mean, but that goes back to the shit of, like, anybody that could exist. Most of the people that could exist will never exist. Like, 99.9999, like, in infinitely. Most of the people that would ever exist will never exist. Just based on DNA accommodations. That was a great fucking video, though. Made me start yapping about other shit. All right. Lock in for the next one here, chat. What was the worst year in film history? That's deep. I have siblings so they could have kids as well. 
yeah, but they're, it's it's not the same as you, right? The the DNA, all, your generation will still be there, but I'm saying, like, hypothetically, say you're an only child or your fucking siblings also don't have kids, right? That's the end of the bloodline. But even if you do have siblings that have kids, your DNA, your individual DNA, will never get passed on. I'm not trying to tell motherfuckers, like, hey, you gotta have kids one day. Like, no. But I'm just saying, like, personally... I feel like part of it of why I want to have kids one day is that raising somebody in the way that I would want to raise them and then also just being able to foster a human consciousness to grow and believe what they want to believe. Like, I think life is great, right? Even with the fucking shitty downsides, I think, like, it's an experience, right? And you're giving... A, a thing, an experience that doesn't currently exist. Like, that's fucking insane, dude. Like, we didn't... Your future kids don't exist. They, they're, they're an, a, a gray question mark right now. And then, and then anyone you decide, a random person you meet one day, you decide to marry them and you have a kid with them or some shit. That just pops into the fucking universe, some conscious being... That was nothing, not, not was nothing. It, it, it's not even was. Like, I hate how people say, oh, you didn't exist at some point. No, you, di you didn't exist. Yeah, you didn't exist, but you're not you. Like, when people say, oh, you made something exist. Yeah, you popped something into the universe. But, like, you were never you. Ever. Until you were you, right? That's <laughs> God, I just sound like such a fucking stoner right now or like somebody that just fucking takes hallucinogens all the time. But, dude, like, I'm right. I know I'm right. He's on LSD. I'm not on LSD. 80-year-old moment. It's not an 80-year-old moment. You're a stoner? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, man. Relax. Midlife crisis? Not a midlife crisis. See, can I say this? Can I say this? When people say those comments, I feel like it suppresses those thoughts. I feel like it puts people in the simulation. I think it keeps people the day-to-day -day NPC grunts. Whenever somebody opens their mouth and they say something that they find, they find profound, and the gut, the gut response from the average person is, you're high. Midlife crisis... You're a stoner. What, do you take shrooms? Shroom thoughts? No, it's just regular fucking thoughts, man. You're a fucking human. You're gonna die one day, right? You're gonna cease to exist. Maybe not, depending on your religion or, or what actually happens, right? But in my own personal opinion, I think everybody's gonna die, and that's it. They're fucking dead, right? Just, like, turn the TV off. That's fucking it, right? And then, and then when I bring up these thoughts... There's so many people, and I, a philosophy day, nobody ever says that, but it's because I'm doing a regular react day. So a lot of people that would normally not show up for a philosophy day are here. They'll say the shit where it's like, you're just high. Dude, maybe, or I'm just actually fucking using my brain, or I'm thinking, right? And then when you, and then it suppresses people from having those thoughts and just living in a fucking Truman show. Blueberry for the sub, Lord for the sub. Ethan for three, what's your workout routine? You don't need to say each exercise. Back, biceps, abs, day one. Chest, triceps, shoulders, day two. Legs, abs, day three. Day four, rest, day five. Repeat the cycle. Lock in. It's basically uh, pull, push, legs. First year for film. Easy. Making me, I'm gonna die, making me feel like I'm going to die right now. You're not going to fucking die right now. But like, dude, memento mori. Remember death. You could die any fucking moment. People just live their life and it's like, it's like so normal. And they don't remember the fact that like, dude, you're going to die. Like you're going to fucking die. Like you, one, like not, 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 not possibly when is the question. Not if it's a fucking when, like you're gonna, you're gonna cease to exist. Look at your grandparents. That'll be you. And it, and, and when you're your grandparents, it'll from now to your grandparents, it'll feel like snap, snap of the fingers. Ask your grandparents. They'll say their life fucking flew by, right? Some people might say it feels like fucking an eternity, but most of your grandparents are probably going to say, damn, it feels like I was 20 fucking a day ago. Wag for the sub B for the three. What was the final straw that turned you away from Christianity? I'm the opposite. Went to a private school and improved my faith. Uh, when I read scripture and I disagreed with uh, what the priest told me it said versus what I believed it said, 
Uh, while I thought the masses were very spiritual, I just couldn't come to terms with the idea uh, of confession, um, the idea of how morality came to be, uh, and uh, the afterlife. Like, m it was many things. It was not an individual final straw. It was a thousand things that just kind of compiled. And then I was like, I just don't believe in this. She for the sub. I'd love to be Christian, right? I would love to fucking believe in an afterlife. A lot of people ask me that on philosophy days. They're like, why wouldn't you believe in an afterlife? Why do you have this depressing, we're going to not exist thing? Because I can't fucking believe in Christianity. I've tried. <laughs> If you want my honest fucking answer, I've tried. I've tried to believe in the afterlife. I can't. I, I, it's, it's, it's the same thing of like, why, like, people will say, why not believe in it? Because then if it's real, you have a gateway to heaven because I can't force myself to believe something. And if you have a fake belief, then you're not actually fucking believing in it, you know? I can't conjure up the belief that when I die, I'm going to fucking meet the pearly gates, right? Or burn eternally. I, I, I just, I don't think that's, I, I personally can't believe in that. I think that I die and that is it. I think I'm a brain. I think I am a brain, I'm an organ with thoughts. Right now, what is coming out of my mind is the organ that controls all the other organs. I don't think it is past that in almost any way. I think I have a consciousness. What that is, I don't know. Sniper for the sub, bipolar for the sub. Kind of deep thought. Glad we're having this chat. I don't know what to believe in. You're probably never going to know what to believe in. I think a lot of people would be, would, would kind of have the train of thought that I have uh, if they took more philosophy classes. I think realistically, though, who you are as a person is usually defined in your early life by your parents' beliefs, and then you kind of get out of that. And I think that was kind of the thought process I had, you know? Escape for the sub. And it wasn't just me. Like, the Catholic school I went to I would say more people went in Christian and came out atheist than coming in atheist and becoming Christian. Like, I knew of one guy in my class that became Christian when he was agnostic, and I, I, he got baptized and everything when he was in high school. And I knew 30 guys in my class that became atheist. Dearth for the sub. Why that is, I don't know. But I think it's when you start really thinking for yourself you kind of either really dig into the faith or you don't believe it, right? Storm for the sub. Because when you're young, you kind of have this faith and it's like, okay, it's what I'm being told to believe, so obviously I'm going to believe it. But then it's like when you start having the freedom of thought, it's like, do I really believe in this? And then you kind of confront that. Somebody said, please stop, Joe. I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want to say on my stream. If you don't like that, leave. Save it for a philosophical day. It's not even a philosophical day. All right, I'll time. Somebody said that's negative as hell, though. That's true. We all fit a die. Bro, like, dude, I'm going to yap what I want to fucking yap about. If you don't want to leave, if you don't want to fucking hear that, leave. Fucking 300 people already left. Bro's losing viewers. I don't give a fuck, Spicy 700. Do you want me to ban you? Like, Jesus Christ. What is with people just being fucking stupid ass chatters? Oh, my God. You don't want to hear what I have to say. Leave. 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 By all means. Oh, my God. It's not all about the fucking money, dude. Bro's losing viewers. Yeah. Do I want to be entertaining to an audience? Yeah. But am I going to still sit here? Am I going to withhold my fucking opinion when I want to fucking yap about something? No. If it makes me lose viewers, it makes me lose viewers. Fuck. I don't give a shit. I do philosophy days, and they average 2,000 less viewers than a fucking regular React day. I know they do, right? Because most people don't want to hear what I have to say. That's fine right? Most people find philosophy fucking boring. Most people find that shit fucking annoying, right? I know a lot of people, I remember Moist Critical even one time said, uh, on a it was either a YouTube video or a podcast. Whenever somebody brings up like a philosophical idea, he just tunes it out because he thinks it's boring. That's fine, right? It's fucking your opinion. If you don't want to fucking hear it, you don't want to hear it, right? But that's not, I'm not going to conform who I am to an audience based on what, whether or not they're going to watch me. A lot of my opinions are going to disagree with yours. That's fine. Right? It, like, it's not a philosophy day. I know it's not a philosophy day, but you can fucking share your opinion in my chat. If it's fucking disrespectful, I'll ban you. There's a lot of people that'll fucking email me and they'll be like, why do you ban me? I was just sharing my opinion. Your opinion was uh, something along the lines of, I don't like, I don't like gay people. Like, that, that's not, that's, that's, your, yeah, it's your opinion, but it's fucking disrespectful. 
It's de devaluing a, a human being, right? You sharing your opinion is like, hey, saying like, I think about this about immigration, right? That's different from saying like, you don't like a specific cl class or group of people, right? Like me sharing my opinion on the afterlife isn't like something that's going to fucking shock the world. Peep for the sub. Like, if you don't want to watch me, don't watch me. That's all I'm going to say, right? Even if it's not a philosophical day. If I want to fucking rant about philosophy, I want to rant about philosophy. It's my major in college. It's my passion. It's the one thing I actually fucking care about, right? Bro said, sorry, dad. I'm banning you. I'm moving on. You're soft. And actually, I won't fucking ban him. Unban him. But like, dude, fucking get a grip, man. If I'm going to have my rant and you don't want to watch it, leave. Aiden for the three. I like to believe that there's something after death so I don't have to be scared of dying because I would like uh, to have, uh, I would like to think about living in nothingness for eternity. I would have to think about living in nothingness for eternity. You don't have to think about living in nothingness. There is nothingness. Like, a lot of people think that, like, if I don't believe in an afterlife, I believe in, like, a void of darkness. No, it's just nothing. You just don't exist. Asher for the sub. Which sucks. But I think a lot of people opt for an afterlife out of fear because it's like, I don't want to die, right? Believing uh, humans are innately inclined to fear and, and run from death because we don't want to die. Humans don't want to die. Animals don't want to die. Not, it's not just a human thing. It's an animal thing. The creation of an afterlife removes that fear. Now you don't have to fear death because you, don't, you didn't die. You died, but some form of you still moves on, right? That's great. I would love for that to be true. But I can't make myself believe that. I would love to, though. Pizza and Smooth for the sub. Asher for the sub. Psy for the three. I can't wait for the future attack because online rebuttals will be insane. Imagine ratioing somebody with an AI-generated gif of them getting hit by a car. Jet for the five. I think your philosophy rants are so entertaining and they make me happy. You never quit philosophy shit. You're, uh, you're so great, dude. All love. Thank you. No, I'm not, I'm not like, dude, I, we're going to move on to the reacts. I'm not going to sit here and fucking yap for that long. Uh, but it's like, damn, dude. Did I, did I unban Spicy? Can my mods unban Spicy if I didn't? My shit's glitching out. Sigh for the sub. No, but we'll, we'll do a philosophy stream in like a week or two. And then I'll, and then I'll fucking yap about this shit more. Lock in. I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna gripe on it too long. I know not everybody wants to hear it. But it's like, uh, that's why I schedule days for that. Because I know people get mad, like Spicy, where he's like, I don't want to fucking hear this shit, right? Whether it be it's because they find it boring or it stresses them out or they get mad because it's uh, disagreeing with their opinion, that's fine, right? I know, I know I have a lot of religious people in my chat that get mad when I share my opinion. That's fine, right? And conversely, I have a lot of religious people that want me to share my opinion because they want to talk to me about it. And that's also fine, right? Jesse for the three. I was recently diagnosed as bipolar and you've seriously helped me uh, keep moving forward and stay positive. You're smart as hell and your philosophy is my favorite content. Love you, man. Thank you. Um... Somebody said, I think religion is kind of a coping mechanism, and I think I'm religious. Uh, or a coping mechanism, and I am religious. I, don't, I wouldn't say that it's a coping mechanism. I think, it, I, I think it really varies by the person. I think religion as, as a whole can give people guidance, right, that don't know where they should go. But I think that religion gives, pe gives people an answer to people that sometimes do not want to think of an answer themselves, right? Like, I read a lot of Friedrich Nietzsche, and nihilism is like a fear, right? Nihilism is like the belief in nothingness, that nothing has value, right? And we're just here for fucking no reason, right? And that's like a terrifying thought that a lot of people confront, and religion gives meaning to that, right? Gives meaning to nothingness, gives meaning to suffering, right? Suffering is like the human thought, right? Or the human endeavor. It's the human pain. Why do we have pain? Why do we, why do we exist? Why do we struggle? Religion answers that, and it gives people that answer rather than having to come up with an answer yourself, uh, and a lot of people opt for that, right? Yo chums for the three. Is it possible religion was created to keep society in order? Well, religion s s rooted itself, I mean, if you just look at historically, um, it depends what religion you're speaking of, but just like the idea of just spiritual beliefs kind of started with society right alongside of society alongside of the formation of language comrade for the three morality as a whole started it started itself alongside of religion like what was good and bad 
Comrade for the three. You are really great, and I love your philosophy, your reacts. You're a very versatile streamer, and that's why I love your stuff. And on the religious stuff for me, I just can't believe in something that can't be explained. Yeah. I don't know. Christianity has stolen from various of other religions for bad reasons. What? All right. Lock back in here, chat. I want to get back into the reacts right now. We'll rant more about this shit on a philosophy day. Society would crumble without religion. I, I would, I would, mm, I don't know if I would agree with that. I think some people would crumble without religion. I think some people need religion. I think religion is a needed thing in society because I think there, I, it really varies on the conscious being. I think some people need religion. I, I don't. I, I, I. I, I, I had it, right, at one point, but I, I don't need it, right? I would love for there to be an afterlife, but I think some people need it. I think some people don't, right? Like, I know even people in my family, my close friends, I have a lot of close friends that are in or not in ab about that shit, right? All right. What was the worst film, or uh, the worst year in film history? Lock back in, chat. Pedro for the sub. Uh, and by the way, chat, like, whenever I ran about these philosophical or religious things, I'm in no way judging other people's religion or their beliefs. Like, I genuinely believe that faith or just philosophical shit in general is subjective, right? Like, the idea of faith is a strong belief uh, in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof, right? Like, what I believe versus what you believe, it, we're both as valid as one another, right? Like, so I'm not judging anybody. All right. What was the worst year in film history? Easy. 14. What was the worst year for film? Easy. 1453. Although it had some significant events movies? like the fall of Constantinople and major advancements in the printing press, the film scene was a little too quiet. Okay, okay, we had to make that joke, but in all seriousness, when looking at the worst years in film history, it's a little- Uh, the year where, uh, it, they were like, rele when all- that one year where a bunch of Marvel movies came out and they were all trash. I don't know if that was like 2021 or 2022. Uh, but that movie was gar- that- that- that era was garbage, where, like, the only movies to look forward to were Marvel movies. A little more difficult than just doing the opposite of what you do when you want to find the best year. You can't just look for the year that released the worst films. Every year has terrible films, many of which go unseen. But if that was the criteria, then 2003 deserves a nod with classics like The Room, Gili and the Cat in the Hat. Instead, we're looking at the years with lackluster lineups that didn't. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say. I feel like the worst, it, the the year, the worst year for film isn't the year with the worst movies. It's the year with the worst best movies. The heights that most usually do, which would be the 2021 Marvel era. Whether it's with their blockbusters or Oscar-nominated films, we found four years that really stood out, and three of them have a valid reason for being considered one of the worst, whether it's due to some global event, advancements in technology, or changes in the film industry. So let's get started by getting the obvious one out of the way first, the 2020. year 2020. 2020 was always going to have a difficult time matching 2019, which had once upon a time in Hollywood, Knives Out, Little Women. Oh, End Knives Out, great movie. Oh, Endgame. Oh, yeah, no, that's a hard, that's a hard year to fucking, to fucking, uh, you know, try and best. Endgame came out in 2019, though. I feel like it came out earlier. Endgame, The Irishman, and just so much When was more. Infinity War? Like 2016? And you can't forget Parasite sweeping the 2020 Oscars. A foreign movie winning Best Picture was unheard of and made us optimistic about where the film industry will go in the new decade. Well, what we got instead was a global pandemic that would last the next three years. With movie theaters being a natural super spreader, it meant that the film industry would take a huge hit. Theaters were closed for most of the year with only short periods where restrictions were lifted. Most film festivals suffered the same fate with many cancellations, postponements, and restrictions. The closure of cinemas lost the global box office billions of dollars because studios pushed their films out of 2020 and put many film productions on hold. And no one knew how long the pandemic would last, so these film delays happened incrementally. A quiet place Nah, but there were a few movies that just dropped day of on streaming services. That was fucking lit. That was the one good thing about 2020. I remember that. When they were like, all right, the movie theaters are closed. We're just going to drop this bitch. Right now, you can watch it at your house, day of. Somebody redeemed Scream? Oh my god. Alright, countdown, five seconds. Turn down your headsets. Ah! 
I've always wondered if I've, like, awoken somebody that was asleep on my stream when I do that. Like, you think there's somebody that I just woke up that was just fucking snoozing me? Uh, Barnard for the sub. Uh, Brunsky for the three. What are your thoughts on human beings predisposed to believe in gods in the afterlife? Some people say children are born believing in God. Just want to hear your take. Pedro for the sub. I think that the, I think God fill, I think God is just following the dualist mindset of life where we are finite so we can imagine something that's infinite. Uh, and God also explains the things that science cannot. Um, when you sit there and you wonder, why does the sun rise? All this other stuff. People create the sun god, the, the ocean god, right? You create a lot of gods for things that don't make sense. Um, I don't know. Do I think there's like an ultimate being? I think the ultimate being would just be the universe. I think people prescribing God as like some bearded man that lives in the clouds is like not what it would actually be. Like they wouldn't even have a physical form. Uh, Playboy for the three. My music, my music's louder than your scream corrupted for the three. You're talking about 2021. Shang-Chi, No Way Home, Eternals, and Black Widow were the Marvel movies 2021. Eternals and Black Widow were solid movies just released wrong time. No, Eternals was garbage. Uh, not released wrong time. Eternals was just a bad fucking movie, in my opinion. Uh, one of the worst Marvel movies I've ever seen. Uh, Ezio for the sub. I liked Morbius more than I liked Eternals. Uh, it was a bad movie. Part 2 premiered in early March of 2020 with a full release scheduled later that month, but it got delayed multiple times before finally getting its theatrical release in May of 2021, over an entire year later. But No Time to Die's delay which pushed it out of April 2020 had everyone joining in on the delay train. Black Widow, Dune, Eternals, F9, and not only blockbusters oh, but- Oh fuck, get the fuck out of here with the Fast and Furious movies bro, oh my god, fucking shit show. I, I have had zero interest in watching any new Fast and Furious film for the last fucking six years. Stop making them. Stop making them. I'm, I know they're going to make a fucking John Wick 5. I hope they stop after that because John Wick becomes like some fucking Mission Impossible shit where it's like a 10 film movie series. It just ruins it. But also the French Dispatch. Like last end it when it's good. Fast and Furious should have ended at like fucking five. Fast and Furious 5 should have been fucking done. Last Night in Soho, West Side Story, and Nobody. But lo and behold, one film was ready to stand up against the pandemic. Tenet. Originally delayed from his July- John Wick died? Yeah, but there's like theories that he didn't. Is there a John Wick? I remember looking this up. John Wick Chapter 5 it's, is in development. During an early an earnings call in November 2023, the chairman of Lionsgate Motion Picture Group said, oh, uh, on the John Wick side, we got multiple spinoffs and Wick 5. So, like, it, 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 maybe it's not John Wick, John Wick, but, like, they're going to keep making those movies. Fluffy is for the three. Through YouTube autoplay, your old VODs uh, have played, and during uh, the Scream Redemption, I woke up to it. Um, oh, yo, chat, speaking of, I'm making a VOD channel in, like, a week. Uh, by the way, having Brady code all this shit for it, it's going to be great. Uh, I know Everest does it right now, but I'm contacting them to stop when I start. Um, and we're uh, going to be doing like more. There will be like better thumbnails for it. All the copyrighted shit will be cut out. It's going to be just like my VOD channel, basically. Ezio for the fucking six subs. Thank you for the fucking six gifted, Ezio. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the six gifted. The release, the long-awaited Christopher Nolan film would take on in August what every other film this year was afraid of. And it flopped hard. Tenet was a lesson for the industry and many more delays followed soon. What was left behind made up a very hollow year for film. Sure, there were still some great movies like Soul, Palm Springs, Minari, and Another Round with many films coming to streaming and theater simultaneously to still have a viable 2020 release. But you can't argue the lack of quality films had this year. Take a look at the 2020 box office. Two foreign movies topped the world- Sonic the Hedgehog? That fuck did any of you guys watch that movie? Dude, no way Sonic the Hedgehog worldwide grossed $319 million. Wide numbers. This was the first time a was it good? film was the top grossing movie of the year. And the first time since 2007 that the top grossing- Ooh, fire movie, fire movie, fire movie. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, great movie, great movie. Harry Potter, 
I, I don't remember which one this was. Spider-Man 3, Shrek the Third. Oh my god. Yo, this might be the best movie fucking year ever. The Simpsons movie, I Am Legend, Ratatouille, Transformers, Shrek the Third, 300, National Treasure. Holy fuck, movies used to be so much better. Film earned less than $1 billion. And it wouldn't be until No Way Home at the end of 2021 to break that $1 billion mark again. It's even funnier when you look at the domestic box office where you'd see films that would have never even dreamed of being in the top 10. To cap off 2020's film calendar, Wonder Woman 1984 managed to squeeze in at the end, a fitting end to the year's blockbuster lineup. The Oscar nominations- Whenever I see these scenes, I can't help but think like how dumb the actor probably looks during the filming. Just... Standing there, just like literally like either standing or or sitting on like a harness, like a foot off the ground. I know. The Oscar nominations still ended up being all right, but that was because they extended the eligibility date range to February 28th and reduced the theater screening requirements. Even though it's not one of the four years we are calling the worst, 2021 does deserve an honorable mention. It was an improvement over the previous year, but it was feeding off of 2020's delays. And it still had so many of its own delays because of COVID and the halted film productions. Avatar 2, Doctor Strange 2, The Batman, Dungeons- Yo, people didn't like Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. I thought that was a really good movie. I Maybe it's because I'm a Doctor Strange dick rider and he's like my favorite Marvel character outside of like Venom. Uh, and maybe Deadpool, but like, dude, like those, I, I, I don't think those three movies really go bad. And I'll also say, like, I, I don't really think it's because of that, because I, Venom's like one of my favorite, like, superheroes, and Carnage was a bad movie. Like, Carnage was not a good movie, comparable to the first one, it was like a massive letdown. Batman was great. And Dragons and Top Gun Maverick were all supposed to come out in 2021, but got pushed back another year or two. It wouldn't be until 2022 before we'd get a return to form. Oh, might be the best movie I've ever seen. Might be the best futuristic movie I've ever seen. If I'm going, I don't know about best movie, be best futuristic movie right there. Oh, fucking love. What is it called? I always forget the name of the movie. Give me a second. There's a donut. It's multiverse shit. Oh my God. And it's not like superhero. It's like actually fucking good. Everything everywhere all at once. I always forget because it's such a long name of the movie until 2022 before we'd get a return to form. For the next worst year in film, we're going all the way back to the year 1929. It was during that year where technology advanced and we silent film got sound and talking. I got really high one day and I watched a silent film on Netflix. <laughs> from like it was I don't even know what year it was from. It was from like dude, I it was like that old shit where they'd go and it'd like show the title and it'd be like, wow. And then it'd go to like him like falling down a fucking staircase or some shit. It was like a comedy movie. And it was like 30 minutes. Netflix, Netflix, uh, silent film comedy. It was like a 30 minute episode, dude. I gotta, I feel like I could just find a sign. It's probably like free. Silent film comedy. It was like this. Oh my god, like exactly like this. I felt, and nothing was funny at all. Like chat. I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to say that people in the 1920s watching like comedy movies now would like piss themselves laughing. Because it is, like, relatability to, like, modern life. But, like, yo, they'll have, like, jokes where it's just, like, he fell. And people were laughing there. Like, chat, somebody, like, just imagine, imagine, like, a 30-year-old in 1920. This guy was born in 1890 watching this film, and he's like, <laughs> they're trying to kiss, and he keeps turning around. It feels like a fever dream, dude. Ugh. 
Respectable stunt here. Very respectable stunt. Okay, this is like unbearable chat. One day I just want to go live, but I fall off on Twitch. I'm just going to watch silent films on stream with 10 viewers. You kinkin' will be here. Is he here right now? He's not even here right now. Fake fan. Never mind. He won't be here. Oh, some shit's gonna happen with the boards here, surely. Oh, the house fell apart. It's like that Mario minigame. They stole this from Mario Party 4. What if they fucked that up? Like, like, deadass. Like, what if they fuck, like, yo, you know damn well they didn't have, like, they just had an X that this guy had a stand on. What if he just died? Like, if that fell on his head, he would be fucking dead. Like, if, if this end part here, that's probably, it probably weighs like fucking 300 pounds. And people, like, yo, they didn't even say anything. Do you think they talked at, like, during the movies? What does this even say? And the, the old piano falling. The end of a perfect day. Words and music. There isn't even words in the fucking film. He's known for doing stunts. What do you know everything about 1920s fucking Buster Keaton silent films? Sorry. In film, commonly known as talkies. Although already seen in 1927, it was not until 1929 where talkies became the industry standard. The problem was that it flipped the industry on its head, needing a few years to find its stride again in this revolutionized form. Oh, because people had to speak. The actors could no longer just go. They fucking just stood there and made stupid faces. Now they actually have to have acting skills. In the previous years, silent films became a mature art form and released some of their best films during that time such as Sunrise, Metropolis, Napoleon, and A Passion of Joan of Arc. Warner Brothers released the first all-talking film, Lights of New York, in 19... What's the oldest movie year you would watch a film, chat? Brooke tried to get me to watch The Outsiders last night, and that shit was made in like 1983, and I was just like, ah! I think I could watch a film from the 1980s. I don't think I could watch a film from the fucking 70s, dude. Or the 60s. When was fucking Wizard of Oz made? Anything before then, I can't watch. Wizard of Oz was 1939? What? Wizard of Oz was made in 1939? Get the fuck out of here. Yo. Star Wars was 77? Okay, I could watch Star Wars. I don't know. I, I feel like Wizard of Oz is the only movie that I'd watch that's that old. 28, turning their $23,000 budget into $1,252,000 worth of revenue. What was once considered a fad in 1927 soon had every studio rushing in. By February of 1929, the last of the eight major studios from Hollywood's golden age, Columbia Pictures, released their first talkie. Studios were throwing money at anyone who could create talkies for them, really trying to rush them out into theaters. By adding sound to film, everything from a technical and creative standpoint was changed, which was very difficult to overcome. Now add studio pressure on top, and it's no surprise why 1929 had no great films. There were three things that needed to be sorted out to return the film medium to its glory. The first was technology. Cameras were very loud back then and needed to be in a soundproof cabinet while filming. The actors also had to stay within a certain range of the microphone, severely limiting their movement to be very unnatural. But in the following years, technology and techniques advanced, so they started using camera casings that suppress noise, along with boom mics and directional microphones to help combat the sound recording limitations. It's actually all very interesting what they had to go through. My favorite scene in Babylon goes over these difficulties so well. We'll leave a link in the description. It's very funny and stressful, so definitely check it out. And Babylon covers- It's always weird when actors play actors. Like Joey from Friends. Like he's an actor playing a struggling actor that sucks at acting. Blazy for the sub, Carter for the sub, D1 for the sub. Cheesy for the three, Jammin for the five. Uh, do you stand in solidarity with Palestine? Can you have a moment of pa uh, silence for Palestine? Yeah, we'll have a moment for silence pra uh, for Palestine. We're doing a charity stream for Palestine Children's Relief Fund 
Uh, I don't have the exact date yet. I'm probably going to figure that out in two days, but uh, early March. Brandello for the three. Uh, National Treasure might be bottom of the tier list. Still dope movie. Go to year. Uh, Blazy for the three. First time sending bets. Want to say I watch your YouTube videos and I appreciate how funny uh, and entertaining you are. You're my favorite. My favorite horror movie is World is Hereditary. Have you seen it? No. Venon and Marper for the sub. The Governor for the three. Uh, I got to go to work. Bye. All right. No, nah, no. Nah, yeah, I stand with Palestine. I'll say, what I'll say is, dude, like I... When I announced that I was doing the Palestine Children's Relief Fund charity stream, the amount of shit I got from people just pissed me the fuck off, bro. Like, and I already know it's going to be even more when I actually do the stream and I, like, shout that shit out on TikTok and fucking make a video about it. But it's like, dude, at the end of the day, like, it, it just bothers me. Because people will be like, oh, you're supporting terrorism. I'm like, you're a fucking smooth brain, dude. Like, genuinely. There's this entire transition to sound extremely well, including the- Kali for the sub. The next difficulty the industry had to overcome, the talent, more specifically, the actors. The silent era in its short life had many established Hollywood stars by the end of it, but this transition to sound didn't go so smoothly for many of them. Actors without stage experience fell behind like Norma Telmaj. Others with heavy accents were also at risk like German actor Emil Jennings, and sometimes their voices were just awkward as was the case with John Gilbert. These three and so many more faded quickly into obscurity as new stars emerged to replace them, many of which came from musical theater. This left 1929 as that awkward year where the majority of people- I fucking hate mu I hate musicals. I hate musicals, dude. Never liked them. Will never like them. There's like a solid few that I can handle. But if I'm watching a movie and I'm like, oh, this movie's pretty good 10 minutes in, and then they break out in song. Stop. Just fucking, just, just, just do the movie. I don't need, I don't need to have a four minute fucking song. What about La La Land? Dude, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a few movies where I get it. But it's like, dude, like old Disney movies where they just break out. I can't watch them. I can't watch old Disney movies. Conan Grizzly for the sub. People involved with making. I can't. I, I, I don't dislike Disney movies. I hate Disney movies where they're just like randomly singing. Films didn't really know what they were doing, including the film creators themselves, which was the third challenge to overcome. Silent films reached an aesthetic peak in the late 1920s, and this made the early years of talkies really stand out as having a drop in quality. Some of the top creators like Buster Keaton were eager to explore sound in film, only for studios to strip them of creative control. But many of the best directors were very hesitant at first when it came to talkies, even looking down on them. Back then, Alfred Hitchcock believed that silent pictures were the purest form of cinema, and that the early attempts of sound films were just photographs of people talking. Even though 1929 was the year sound films took over, it wouldn't be until April of 1930 when the first well-received sound feature film was released, The Blue Angel, which was a German film. That same month, we get the first critically acclaimed American talkie, All Quiet on the Western Front. Then later oh, that that's year- that's a famous fucking movie. I feel like they made me watch that for class. Jamin for- or Jammin. Jammin or Jamin for the $40 fucking dono. Did not need a fucking tip that much, dude. Thank you for the fucking $40 dono. Dub in the chat for that. Thank you so much. All eyes on Palestine from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Thank you for the fucking 40. How am I- am I saying your name right? Jammin Dustry- Jammin Dustry- Jam Industries. Oh my god, I'm a fucking idiot. Here, another great German talkie, West Front 1918. But then the following year, we got what is called. said tip? Yeah, because it says the word tipped. Jam Industries tipped 40. Considered as the first talkie masterpiece, M. And again, it was a German film. Talkies began hitting. I'm getting bored of this. I'm getting bored of this. I just, I, I, I just can't, I can't lock in for the fucking history of film, dude. Uh, we're going to move on. Most deadly job in America. Lock in. Dies, who becomes the president? Well, the Constitution. Whoa, 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 whoa. When the president dies, who becomes the president? Well, the vice president. And then if they die, isn't it the fucking speaker of the house? Or am I crazy? The Constitution says what happens next is the vice president assumes the powers and duties of the office. Simple enough, but one backup president is none backup president. So what happens next next? The Constitution left this question as homework for- Isn't there a show about, like, the guy 20th in line becoming president after, like, the White House gets fucking bombed during a meeting? 
what what is that a movie or a fucking show and like everyone dies and this guy that's like basically just a nobody just becomes president King Wolves for the fucking 21 month sub. Thank you for the sub. Mr. Nico for the fucking 2,000 biddies. What are we watching? Uh, the most deadly job in America. MO for the three. Hi from the UK. Love your stream. Keep up the good work. Thank you. It's designated survivor. Or the new Congress. Important homework, yes. Due date, no. So Congress sort of worked on succession with inconsistent and conflicting drafts, but mostly procrastinated on properly finishing for 200 years, finally turning in the 25th Amendment. Better late than never, though in the meantime, a president had died in office not once, not twice, not thrice, not quadrice, not quintice, not hexice, nor septice, but octagonal ice. For natural causes, for- Eight guys died? The only presidents that I know, JFK and Abe. Who else died during their presidency? Abe Lincoln and JFK. FDR? FDR didn't die when he was president. Obama? Chat, what the fuck are you talking about, Obama? Martin Van Buren? Obama? Jeffrey Dahmer? That guy, that's a serial killer. John Adams? Martin Luther King wasn't president. Jesus. Like, you got... Yo, if you're fucking... If that motherfucker that's just an MLK was serious, bro. MLK was never a fucking president. Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, I'm just gonna press play. <laughs> Zerk. Zerk, 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 for the fucking five gifted. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the five gifted. For assassinations, it was Garfield and McKinley. This survival record was only eighty percent, and even counting to today, the president is technically the most deadly job in America. But the odds are, when you become president, you must roll the celestial two d six, and if you roll a seven, you die in office. Woof. Don't spend a lot of time. No, in the most deadly job in America was the people that worked on the skyscrapers in the fucking 40s. How many people died working on skyscrapers pre-harness? Two out of every five construction workers fell to their deaths when they were building the New York skyscrapers in the 1920s. That means if you had 10 fucking workers, four of them would die. And they would just fall to their death on the job. In Vegas with the Zerk for the four gifted. Thank you for the four gifted subs. Those odds. So the Veep becomes the peep and picks a new Veep who must be confirmed by a majority vote of both houses of Congress. If this happens quickly, then hunky dory. Everything is reset. But getting a VP nominee approved might take some time, during which the former VP, who is now the president, who is not immortal, must cast the dice and could roll a seven. The office of the vice president has been vacant for more than a baker's dozen of times in United States history, which, given the historical state of Congress's homework at the time, put the peaceful transfer of power in a precarious position. For example, the first time a president died in office, the ninth, by the way, didn't even make it to double digits, no one knew what should happen. The then VP just grabbed a judge to administer the oath of the presidency to become number 10, and spent the rest of his term arguing with Congress and the nation about if he was really the president president or the acting president. Which seems a little, who cares, what's the difference? But there is the office of the president and there are the powers and duties are of- you actually the president or the acting president because if you die you're not on the president list as president like you're a vp like say i'm a vp of fucking biden and biden keeled over and i'm president for a year they're not going to throw me in on the fucking president list the office which are not quite the same thing See, it's not just death that can remove a president. A president can resign, a president can be impeached, and a president can be enabled to discharge the powers and duties of- Yo, you could deadass just quit? That'd be fucking crazy. A, like, a month? Didn't the UK prime minister do that? Yeah, like a week in? You could just quit. Just be like, nah, I'm done. Nixon quit? Yeah, but he was going to get fucking impeached or some shit. Like, he was, he, I think he quit before it was going to happen. Liz Truss. Why'd she quit? She got a lot of shit. Dude, imagine, though, getting, becoming president for, like, a week and being like, nah, I'm not fit for the job. I'm done.
office. This last enable is from the Constitution, which makes no attempt to define what enable means. A president can volunteer themselves to be enable, for example during physical illness, upon which they don't leave the office, but the VP gets the powers and duties of the office and becomes acting president. This on a tiny scale has happened a few times when the president has undergone non-trivial surgery, a reason for this being to ensure nuclear weapons command and control is maintained at all times. So don't get any ideas, but also you don't get any ideas. I'm still the president. Power reverts as soon as this is over, and it will, assuming death doesn't make a bedside visit. Anyway, inability is a subjective sliding scale. A president could be perceived as mentally enable. Imagine some... Joe dies this year. Yo, I'm so serious. If Biden or Trump become president, I will not be surprised if either of them die during presidency. Like, they are old. Old. Like, when you're at that age, you could just have a heart attack in your sleep. Like, I'm not talking like, oh, they're going to become ill. Like, they could just die. Like, at any moment. Like, that could happen to anybody. But it can much more likely happen to fucking Joe and Trump than, like, a 35-year-old man. Somebody redeemed Dent. Blazy for the three. What are your thoughts on A24? What do you mean A24? The entertainment company? I, I don't know. Some, or become so mentally enable as to be unable to declare themselves enable, or become physically enable yet simply refuse to declare it. Here, the 25th Amendment allows for the vice president to perform a kind of... Play the devil within? I feel like I already played that game gentle coup. Okay, the president has 15 top-level advisors we will get to later. If the VP can get a majority of advisors to state in writing the president is enable, the VP gets the powers and duties of the office. The president can challenge this, getting a moment to try and consolidate keys to power, but if the VP and advisors reaffirm the president is indeed enable, the VP is acting president and a 21-day countdown clock begins. How do, you, how do you determine the president's enable, though? What happens next is up to like, if it was, uh, who's the guy that froze up on, uh, screen? He's in Congress. Is it Mitch McConnell? Where he, like, blanked, like, four times and, like, just couldn't move? Like, that, I feel like if he was president, people would be like, all right, he's enable. Like, a lot of people say Joe's enable because he's old as fuck and he'll, like, freeze up sometimes or just, like, make no sense. But, like, I don't think people would vote him as unable like, I don't think it would get enough votes as unable. Whereas, like, Mitch McConnell, like, I feel like people would be like, okay, dude. To Congress, if they do. Like, you, we have people walking you off fucking, we have people walking you off, right? Do nothing when the clock runs out, presidential power returns. Biden has multiple times. Dude, I'm not going to get into a political argument. I do think that Biden is too old to be president. But conversely, I will say the same of Trump, right? I voted for Biden, but I can admit when I think he is too old. But I would say that if you're going to say Biden's incapable and has dementia and he's too old, you have to say the same thing about Trump, if we're being real. They're both fucking old. Decrepit, I might add, right? Like, Trump can hide it a bit better. Trump's also a fucking billionaire, right? And, and has done PR his entire life, right? Like, he knows what to do. The people around him know what to do to make him look more competent than he is. Same of Joe, where people make him look competent. But I'm saying, like, it, yeah, they're both old. They're both way too old. Little pickle for the three. I don't think you should be able to be president above the age of 65, if you want my honest take. I think just as there's a, an age minimum, there should be an age maximum. Trump, Truman wasn't elected. He took over when FDR died. To the president. But FDR died in office? I thought he fucking got through it and then stopped. If within the 21 days Congress votes with a two-thirds majority that the president is enable, then the vice president is permanently acting president. And the president is still around. Ah! Awkward. Obviously, this would be a real delicate maneuver for any VP to pull off, particularly as the president can dismiss their advisors for any reason as long as the president holds the powers and duties of the office. So getting advisors on board would be 
challenging. Case in point, in 1919, the president suffered a stroke and was mostly blinded and partly paralyzed. Don't worry, no big deal, the president just doesn't want to talk to the public or meet with his VP or consult with his advisors or leave the White House at all. Alright, one more thing I'm gonna input about president sh presidential shit. People will say shit about any presidential candidate they don't support to try and prove that they are unfit. Who is the, uh, what is the, the guy, the name of Kennedy's, like, nephew that's running and is pulling a lot of support right now? Robert F. Kennedy. He has a speech issue, like a genetic speech issue. Wait, no, not Robert F. Kennedy. Who the fuck am I thinking of? Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Not Robert F. Kennedy. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's also old as fuck, but he's 70, which is less old than Trump and Biden. He's getting a lot of support, but he has, like, a speech issue, and I guarantee you, if he pulls a lot of support, Trump's gonna be on stage, and he's gonna be like, Why, why do you sound so weird, funny man? Do you not, do you not know how to speak? Like... It's just gonna be it's gonna be a whole fucking thing, right? Like I'm not I'm not saying that I'm voting for Robert F. Kennedy. I don't know about his fucking political shit. I haven't looked into him at all. But I'm saying that he I know he's pulling a lot of support, and I know he has a speech problem, and people are gonna do that, right? It's gonna be the same thing. It when it comes down to it, and it's like almost voting time, cause we're voting soon. A lot of people ain't remembering that we're voting soon. We're voting in eight months, right? presidential elections coming up <laughs> fucking when i tell you it's gonna shit's gonna hit the fan and motherfuckers are gonna be fucking just shooting shit at each other live on stage like like it's a fucking high school lunchroom argument but it's gonna be live and it's gonna be presidential candidates just digging at each other like that's what it's gonna that's what's gonna happen Jamming for the five. Who would you vote for a 24 at 24 election if you don't mind telling? I don't know who's going to be up there, right? So I don't know. I, you want my dead opinion? I'm, I'm praying that both Trump and Biden don't get the seat. I want, I want a different Republican and a different Democrat. I don't want them. I, it, it's going to be them. If, if I'm being real, it's going to be them. It's going to be them. It's going to be fucking some other guy. It's going to be another third party dude. But it's like, I, I, I really don't want it to be them. If it is them, I, I, Biden again. If you, if you, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want him and I don't want Trump. But just off of my political stances, I think that it, I, I'm going to have to go Biden again. Back for the three. You could stare at the camera and say, fuck you, Robbie. I'm not going to do that. that. I feel like that's fucked. Little for the three. Truman was elected. He took over after, I already read that for a year and a half and during this time there was no move by the vp <laughs> big donkey said you're an idiot you don't know the you don't know the right versions of your to declare the president unable but there might be a way around the vp the 25th has this line about congress oh so you know about political you know about like political shit right you know about like political fucking bills and, and and what's going in office and everything but you don't know the difference between your and you are like its own committee to determine the president and able but the way it's worded is a little unclear does it mean the vp and advisors or congress committee determine inability or does it mean the vp and advisors or congress committee if the latter interpretation, that means Congress alone- Can you watch that on Twitch without copyright? What, the presidential debates? Yo! Am I able to watch? Joe's just being a petty bitch. How am I being a petty bitch? I don't care who you vote for. But when I share my- When somebody says, who would you vote for? And then I say- and your guttural response is you're a dumbass or you're an idiot and you use the wrong version of your, I'm going to fucking roast your dumbass, right? Because all I did was share my fucking opinion on who I'm going to vote for. If you were like, I'm going to vote for Trump, I'd say, okay, cool shit, man. I don't care, right? But if you're like, you're a dumbass, I'm going to come at you.
I'm not being petty. Backs for the three. I already read that. One has the power to appoint a committee with the power to remove the power of. Yo, the if I could stream the fucking debates, though, I would love that. And I would, I would come at it at a at a at a non biased way. I would make fun of both parties. I would share my opinion on what I honestly believe about the topics that they're speaking of. But oh, I'd, I I when they say some dumb shit, I'd be like, that's fucking stupid. The president. C-SPAN allows it, but other companies don't don't usually. It seems unilaterally. But as always, with no, you wouldn't said Evictus for the sub. But you are a dumbass. Joe, I'm not voting for a skill issue. Can you vote for me? Why Why are you voting for again? Bro, like, why do you get so mad? I feel like that's a part of the problem in this country is, like, you just immediately having the gut response to say you're a fucking idiot when I say who I want to vote for. Like, dog. Or, like, me saying I'd give an unbiased response. Like, I can give an unbiased response at a debate. If people are stupid, they're stupid, right? Biden has done dumb shit as a fucking president, flat out. Do I think he's the most fit fucking Democratic uh, nominee? No, not even close. Do I think that the reason Trump and Biden, do I think the same of Trump? No, not even close. Why do I think that they're going to fucking get the, the nominations? Because both people know that it's a popularity fucking game. That's all the presidential election is. Because the majority of people in the United States that vote know nothing about politics and they vote for people based on name recognition. If we put somebody in that was most fit on the Democratic side, or conversely, put somebody that's most fit on the Republican side, nobody's going to vote for them because nobody knows who the fuck they are. Because the majority of fucking people just vote for who, who they know. They know nothing about politics. They just say, uh, yeah, Trump. Oh, yeah, Joe Biden. Uh, it's the same fucking thing, dude. They just, they just vote for who they know. Clear interpretations were they to it's a popularity game. That's all it is. And for realsies, someone might it's want... not to politics, which is annoying. To weigh in on it. So those are the four or five ways a president can get removed from office. But one of them is clearly the most popular, so let's talk about what the finished congressional homework says about succession. First, the doubt that began with President 10 is dispelled by the 25th. When the I'm done with this. Uh, he's just getting so technical, dude. I wanted him to make jokes and shit. Uh... Did you see that a Kennedy is running for president? That's what I just said. Coffee for the three. I know this is off topic. When you play Sons of the Forest 1 when it comes out. What do you mean 1.0? When 1.0 comes out. What does that mean? Backs for the three. Don't read this, don't read this out loud. No. Backs for the three. When you say don't read this out loud, and I read don't read this out loud, and then you ask me to do something where I'm going to like act like I'm possessed, like people are going to know, you know? Or if I just pause... All right, next video. How this nerdy team become, became FBI's most wanted trafficker. Lock in. Being forced, the group of high school Hiking across the Canadian forest, the group of high school boys were on the verge of a mental breakdown. They had just spotted a DEA van stalking them in the woods because inside these kids' backpacks was over 400 pounds of weed. You see, these weren't your average high schoolers. 400 pounds of weed in five backpacks? Dude, that's heavy as shit. These kids had a smuggling empire that had brought in 17,000 pounds of weed, and their parents would kill them if they ever found out. Undetected, the boys- Parents would kill them? 500 pounds of weed? You're gonna get thrown in fucking federal prison. What the fuck? That is like an obscene amount of marijuana. Drop to the floor to find a way around it. But Nate Norman, the leader of the group, shushed the others and flicked his night vision goggles to get a closer look and began smirking at what he saw. These DEA agents they were so afraid of that could end everything that night were asleep in their van this entire time. And as the boy snuck by and made it home safely that night, Nate Norman, the leader of the group, had just made the easiest money he'd ever made in his life. Half a million dollars. In, two in high school? For bringing a backpack of weed over, bro made a bro made half a mil in cash. How do you money launder that? You're in fucking high school. You can't money launder five hundred thousand dollars. She loved for the sub. As a high schooler, what are you gonna say? Oh, I started a fucking drop shipping business. 
Ryder for the sub. 2001, two rival groups of high school nerds became the biggest drug smugglers in the United States. Debating the DEA, FBI, and Border Patrol for years, they had smuggled in 17,000 pounds of wheat, making $32 million. But through jealousy, betrayals, and shady deals, their empires would fall apart before any of them could legally drink. This is the true story of the nerdy teens who became drug kingpins. Now, Nate Norman wasn't exactly a criminal mastermind. As a broke 19-year-old high school dropout working at Pizza Hut living in his mom's basement in Idaho, the closest he'd ever gotten to organized crime was watching Scarface on cable. Because with no degree and a dead-end job... Yeah, how do you get into that? How do you get into... How do you... How do you... Say, say one day you're just sitting there and you're like, I want to be... I want to smuggle weed for money. That's not... That's not doing anything, right? Like, there's there's a moment where I feel like the opportunity has to arrive or, like, or arise before you actually say, I'm going to do this, right? Because you're not just sitting there like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to start selling drugs. You can't just, you can't just decide that, right? Like, if you're, if you're sitting in your house and you're like, I'm going to sell meth, I'm going to sell meth. What do you do? That's not, that's not like a career option. You're probably like given the option and then you decide to do it rather than deciding you want to do it before you're given the option. For weed, you low-key can. Okay, yeah, selling weed's different. If you want to be like a weed dealer, that's not hard. But if you're sitting there like, hey, I want to go smuggle weed, that's different, right? You're not going to go to your local drug dealer and be like, hey, man, I, I'm willing to push fucking, I'm willing to move stuff for you. I'm willing to fucking drive thousands of pounds of weed. And then your drug dealer goes, dude, I grow it in my basement. Dude, uh, dude, I don't sell, I'm not that, I, I just sell fucking weed, man. All I, if I have like three fucking grow rooms. Coffee for the three. When Sons of the Forest fully released, because you played it, the game wasn't fully complete. I beat the game, though. Uh, the American dream felt so far away for Nate Norman. Change one day when Nate and his buddy Topher were smoking a J, flipping through Times Magazine, and stumbled across a story that would change their lives forever. Canada had the best weed in the world, BC Buds, and smuggling BC Buds across the border? Oh, it's a $7 billion business. Wait a sec, Nate thought. Idaho's right next to the Canadian border. Now, while people knew Nate delivered pizzas around town, he also delivered sacks. Although Nate's prices were high and his bud quality sucked. But knowing that the best buds in the entire world were just a few hours away, oh, Nate could sell the hell out of it if he could just get his hands on it. So that's when he turned the tofer and said, we should become international drug smugglers. Now, while this idea of Dude, a this is literally just were the Millers the movie in real life. But with high schoolers. What a way better, they should make a movie about this. What a way better movie idea. It's just four high schoolers that are like, hey, let's go fucking smuggle drugs. And, and then it's them just going to Canada trying to buy, trying to obtain hundreds of pounds of weed to fucking move it back into Idaho, the fucking potato fucking state. Criminal enterprise sounds great to a 19 year old. A pound of weed costs money, and they were both broke. Pizza Hut didn't pay great, and Topher worked part time at Castle Park. But Topher, believing in his best friend Nate, sold an old boat he had dragged out of the lake for 1400 bucks. And assuming that was enough to buy a pound of weed, the two head on the Canada with what was their life savings. But after coasting through the checkpoint, they quickly realized Canada was not what they thought it was. And where do you go? Where do you go? It's 2000. I want a pound of weed. I'm going to a different country. I pull up to Canada. Am I going person to person saying, hey, do you got a pound of weed? Where's the weed? I, <laughs> I drove all this way. Anybody selling marijuana here? No? Oh, that sucks. Look for a... It doesn't show up! Hope you did not forget me, bro. Salty Unreal for the $325! What the fuck? Tony for the sub. I ain't forget you, bro. Salty, thank you for the fucking dono. You said some shit in chat. Hold up. I don't like react. I don't really like reacts. I prefer games, but it's funny. Thank you for the fucking dono, man. 
Uh, and we're doing game in a bunch this week. Literally the next, like, four fucking five days in a row. Holy shit, Salty. I'm sorry you don't like reacts as much, but thank you for the fucking bomb-ass dono, dude. Holy shit. No, I didn't forget you. you have, you're also in my stream, like, fairly often. You were in here looking at your chats, like, four days ago. And then, like, a month, two months before that. Dude, thank you for the fucking dono, dude. Holy shit. Tony and Yankee for the sub. Bro just casually dropped that big-ass dono. What the fuck? Salty Unreal, you are a goddamn goat, man. Wow, I gotta blow my nose. I feel like I'm getting more nasally. Thank you for the fucking dono, dude. Holy shit. Also, I gotta fucking pee, too. So count me down 30 seconds. I'll actually just run to the bathroom. My god, Salty Unreal, fucking dub in the chat. Big-ass forehead, fuck you. I'll play the rest of Tennessee Whiskey. Listen to the song. Oh, we're back. All right. Sorry, I had to blow my nose, too, so I was gone for a while. And I still have to blow my nose. Motherfucker! All right. Too mysterious for the sub. Salty, thank you for the fucking dono again. All right, lock back in here, chat. See, High Times made it seem like people sold pounds of weed on the side of the road, but it really just looked like the U.S. except kilometers. The f so empty-handed, after hours of searching for a vendor, the two head into a Canadian bar to at least make the trip worthwhile. Maybe Nate's plan was too ambitious, he thought. It, it almost seemed too easy. But old man Frankie, a regular at the bar, gestured at the two Americans sticking out like sore thumbs. As Nate and Topher walked over to him, they said, Could you help us procure a pound of flowers? One pound? Frankie said he had dozens. Of Canada's finest, but it was all back at his apartment. And while Nate and Topher tried to contain their excitement, thinking this was their big connect for BC Buds, well... Old man Frankie had just found his next victim. But inside oh, his crappy no. apartment, the two realized Frankie actually seemed a bit sketch. But I mean, the, where else were they going to go? They were desperate. How much cash you got, Frankie said. For 1400 Why would you say? Bitch, I'd be like, I have $200. I would lie. I would say, how much does a pound of weed cost? You're going to tell him he's a, a $1,400. Oh, oh, that's exactly how much a pound costs. Thank you. Is, is that enough for a pound? That's perfect. That's exactly what a pound costs, Frankie said. But as Nate opened up the bag to get a whiff of those BC buds he had traveled all this way for, Frankie tells him that wouldn't be wise. I mean, they didn't want to get caught from the smell. So with that even way- Oh my god, does he sell them oregano? Smelling or barely even looking at it, the two hand over what was their life savings to a- Does he get ripped? Catchy grandpa, they just met at a seedy Canadian bar. And with the pound of BC buds in hand, they began the hardest part now. Trying to get home. 
Now, according to High Times, the Canadian border is five times longer than the Mexican one, but there's no fence. I mean, you walk in the woods, next thing you know, you cross international lines. And while thousands of smugglers hid weed in horse trailers, snowmobiles, sailboats, hollowed out logs, hell, even underground tunnels, hiking weed across the border was just the easiest, but also the riskiest. So the plan? Nate was gonna drive back home by himself. Wait, you could just walk across the Canadian border? There's not like a fence? Or like border patrol, I could just like walk into Canada and just be in Canada. Hofer would smuggle their precious cargo, hiking seven mi 11 kilometers across the Canadian wilderness. Who said, yeah, I've done it. How do you get back? With bears. They just do the same thing? By himself. Hours later, with dirt on his face, Topher saw his first sign of American civilization. Outback Steakhouse, where there's no rules. It's just right. With Nate parked outside, Topher hopped in for a celebratory smoke of their freshly smuggled BC oh, buds. No. It seemed like the plan had worked. It had all gone well. But after the first hit, something was off. This wasn't the creme de la creme BC buds. No, Frankie had sold them Mexican brickweed at BC bud prices. Or in other words, this should have been $400 a pound. Not 1400 Frankie had sold them buds that were grown in Mexico, smuggled into the U.S., smuggled into Canada, and then smuggled back down to the United States. And that's when they learned you can't trust- So it trust was shit weed. And it was probably old. Crystal for the three. Are you going- Uh, just had to ask, you going live earlier this week? I have break. Oh, isn't it President's Day tomorrow? Oh, shit! Are you guys off? Oh, should I stream earlier tomorrow? I can stream at 2. Oh, yeah, let's just stream earlier tomorrow. What the fuck? I forgot it was President's Day. Yeah, I'll stream early. I'll stream early tomorrow. I'm still off Tuesday. Wednesday, um... I, I, the rest of the week's just gonna be normal. You guys are- I'm off tomorrow and Tuesday. Are you guys got- are you guys off- okay. Y'all off tomorrow- okay, most people are saying yeah. Are you guys off Tuesday too? Just Monday? Okay, most people are just off Monday. Alright, I'll stream- I'll stream at 2 tomorrow then. Fuck, I gotta write that down. Because if not, I'll forget. Wow, that's a dub. Okay, we can stream earlier tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do uh, Minecraft and Killer Frequency or some shit. I don't know. We'll start with Minecraft tomorrow and then fucking do whatever the hell chat wants. Uh, maybe Killer Frequency, maybe more Infinite Craft. I don't fucking know. We'll do that tomorrow at 2. We'll start stream at 2. EST. Tuesday, I'm not live. Wednesday, we're going to be doing... um. Horror games at 4.30, and then Escape the Backrooms with Max. Thursday, I'll do Pacific Drive, maybe some other shit. Uh, Friday's gonna be Reacts. Saturday is the Block Wars 20 at 2, and next Sunday I'll be Reacts at 2. That's the week, though. Obito for the sub, D's for the 3. Uh, you remember me? We had grade school together. No. Your name's D's, dude. Too mysterious for the sub. Uh, Yankees uh, and Tony for the sub. All right. When's the next philosophy stream? I don't know. Damn, chat. We'll stream earlier tomorrow, though. Yeah, I'm down. All right, we'll stream Minecraft at 2, and then we'll just do whatever the fuck after that. I work, you can't stream early? Well, it's not just about your schedule. Foxman for the 3. Or do you want a Fortnite game with 2 kills? I'm proud of you. I don't remember winning a Fortnite game with 2 kills. What time for UK? Buddy, that's your job to do the fucking conversion. What am I going to fucking tell you? What am I going to tell you every time zone? Two EST. Two and a half earlier, two and a half hours earlier than I'd normally go live on a weekday. When I went live today is when I will go live tomorrow. So 2, tomorrow, 2 p.m. EST tomorrow, I'll be live. Uh, we're not done streaming, by the way, chat. 2 p.m. EST tomorrow, I'll be uh, doing Minecraft and then either Killer Frequency or whatever the fuck chat wants. Tuesday, I'm not live. Wednesday, we'll do horror games. Thursday is going to be Pacific Drive, Friday Reacts, Saturday Minecraft Tournament, Sunday Reacts. All right, lock in. Damn, I forgot it was fucking President's Day tomorrow. I have that written on my schedule, too.
anyone in the game, including the ancients, the elderly, and the weak. But luckily enough, the weed drought in Idaho was so bad they could actually still make money on this. Nate hit up his old friend Scuzz to have him sell it on the streets, and Scuzz was a connected dude even at 18 years old. Selling it to every hood rat in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Days later, Scuzz came back with 2,800 bucks, double wow. what they had bought it for. And with his business model proven to work, Nate turned the tofer and said, High Times was right. Why doesn't everyone do this? Because according to their calculations, Nate and Topher were shocked to find out they could make $3 million in just 14 months by doubling their money with every smuggling run. And to them, that seemed like enough. I wouldn't want to be responsible for selling, though, because, like, yeah, they can, they can fucking and smuggle the weed but if they also have to smuggle the weed and sell the weed then they're taking on two fucking potential you're gonna get arrested right whereas if they just smuggle the weed then that's all they gotta do mother for the sub because with three million bucks in hand the two could buy homes start a business and leave the game while they were ahead because when drug dealers get caught it's always because they get too greedy and give themselves away but that wasn't gonna be them they promised to themselves no guns no girls Nothing flashy. You think this is actually them? But little do they know that once you're in the game, there's no easy exits. Because while the rewards are great, the risks are even greater. With one pound became two, became four, became eight, and Nate was growing more comfortable driving thousands of dollars through the Canadian checkpoint. You know, flashing a little disarming wave and a little lip smile. But today, as he coasted through the Canadian checkpoint driving the crest in Canada, Nate really thought about it. this was the ticket out for him. He didn't need college. Hell, with a few more smuggle runs, he could buy his mom a car. And if he found a good grower, oh, Nate could make the big bucks. But then in his rear view mirror, he spotted those Canadian red and blue lights. Sirens grew louder. Nate Norman was getting pulled over by the cops. With American license plates, he Dude, knew imagine his... getting pulled over in another country with like 400 pounds of weed in your car. I think I'd have a heart attack. I, I don't, I, what, you're already gonna be so off-puttingly nervous that it's just, they're gonna fucking, they're gonna, they're gonna search your car. Like, they're not gonna, there's no doubt. And he was probably high, too. Stuck out like a sore thumb as the Mountie parked his car and stepped out. Every step he took, and they could only think about how more he was. But as he rolled down his window, the Mountie said, So, hey, you guys smuggling? Well, because you're, you're not gonna get any flour going to Creston. It's a bunch of loggers. You need to go to Nelson. Don't speed. This is a little warning. Yeah. Getting let off the hook and even a tip on where to find the holy grail of BC buds, Nate was totally wrong. Canada was way Wait, different. the cop told him where to get weed? Like to buy or to smuggle back to the US? ...to the United States. Now, bigger than tourism logging, hell, even maple syrup. In 2001, BC Buds was a $7 billion a year business in Canada, and Nelson was the capital of it. But why? Well, Canada had some of the most relaxed bud laws in the world at the time. We generally feel there's a slightly more humanitarian government around here it's not into putting people away for the rest of their life for their choice of herbs and hydroponic stores that sold tomato growing equipment sprawled all around the city and the result was the golden age of bc buds that were sought all around the world and for nate this is what high times was talking about so walking into several canadian hydroponic stores nate finally found the real bc bud growers that could get him the product to bring down serious weight to the united states and for nate the money would begin pouring in while millions of Americans not like a limit in Canada on how much weed you can legally buy and how much you can buy in cash because I feel like that's a bit sketchy like I couldn't walk into the I couldn't walk into my local dispensary in New Jersey and buy fucking 10 pounds of weed they would be like dude what Mr. Speed for the sub like they have it but they're not going to give it to me Foxman for the three my chat gaslit me and told me you won a Fortnite game I'm sorry I didn't know Chat, did I win a Fortnite game? No. I did really well one time, and I had I had uh, Troy Bolton over my uh, my webcam. I was playing like this, but no, I didn't win. At least I didn't win Thursday. Americans were just baked out of their minds with I Birkin for the sub. Somebody said that's why you use a gun to get 10 pounds. Yeah. With cotton mouth. That but not work. anymore. With today's sponsor, Arab. Arab ain't any. I'm skipping it. I'm sorry. I'm skipping it. I'm skipping it. Run. Nate and Topher waited until dark and driven the raspberry lemon.
On a typical run, Nate and Topher waited until dark and drove within a mile of the border on a remote access road, where Topher, dressed in all camo, would leap out and disappear into the trees. But instead of Nate driving the money over the border, Topher was carrying a hockey bag stuffed with cash for over seven miles, would exchange with the growers directly in Canada, head back down to America. While back in the States, he would hand the bag off to Nate, who would hand it off to Scuzz, who would hand it off to hundreds of dealers. And for all of this, Topher made $1,000 with each run, while Nate by- That BLOWS! By this point, had pocketed over 150 grand, more money than he'd ever seen. Wow, fake friend though. No lie, fucking fake ass friend. Holy shit, they did this together first run, and now bro's making one 150th of what he's making. Like, yeah, he's doing all the grunt work, but I'd be like, yo, he's smuggling the weed. He should at least be making 50, maybe 50, 100. For 150 grand, more money than he'd ever seen in his lifetime. You see, BC buds were in demand, and Nate's operation needed to expand. With serious money coming in, the boys got serious about their methods. Topher hired friends from high school to help him run since these hauls were too heavy for just one dude. By now, hiring your high school friends is a wild fucking idea that is going to dramatically backfire. Say, at the age of like, he's probably like 21 now, he's like, oh yeah, let me ring up my, let me ring up my boy from sophomore, from sophomore track. Hey, do you wanna, do you wanna smuggle weed for me? Yeah, man, sure thing. It was six Toyota 4Runners filled with runners that would head towards the border drop point where they would all change in the camo, slip out into the trees carrying hockey bags full of cash up to 400 grand. Now, well, months earlier, they all said they wouldn't be flashy with their money. Slowly, they all began to get the things they had always wanted. Four-wheelers, jet skis, plasma screen TVs, mini disc players. Whatever they got, it was the most expensive version of it. Scuzz moved out of his mom's basement and told her he was renting a little crappy apartment. But in reality, he bought a lakeside home. Nate began throwing elaborate lingerie parties, inviting half of the town nearly every other Aren't week. Aren't they gonna ask where you're getting that fucking money from and why you only have cash? If, I, if I'm a fucking real estate agent, and this kid comes up to me, and he's 19, and he buys a fucking $500,000 home with cash. I'm going to be like, you sell fucking drugs. That is the first, the only thought that's going into my mind. Is either A, you're a fucking famous rapper or some shit, or B, you sell drugs. And while as the boss, Nate should have been keeping tabs on who was too loud, well, Nate was actually the worst offender. Nate bought himself an eight-bedroom mansion, several stash houses, an Escalade with 24-inch rims, diamond chains, Dom Perignon, Gatson straps, and eight balls of nose candy. And like most drug dealers, became convinced he would become a rapper, so he bought studio time with his drug money. But not all was wild. Nate had found a lovely girlfriend that he had met at a church event. Just kidding. She was a stripper, and her name was Buffy. And Nate showered her with all of the jewelry Gucci bags. Her name was Buffy? That's not a real name. Cabo. And as foolish as it was to draw all of this attention to himself, Nate had just never been cool in his life. He just couldn't resist it. While his high school friends used to call him the Keebler elf growing up, those same friends were now working for Nate. But when Nate's mom asked him where he was getting all of this cash from, well, he told her it was his snowplow business. And then bought her a lakeside home. And she never asked again. You see, Nate had been a paper boy, a telemarketer, cashier, pizza man, but he learned that the only get rich quick scheme that actually works in this world is selling drugs. And Nate. <laughs> the only get rich quick scheme. You gotta, you gotta sell drugs. You just gotta sell meth. You gotta sell crack. Ah, you can sell weed. Not in this, not in today's world. Now you probably gotta sell like fucking ketamine. Maybe, maybe just start, maybe just start selling like oxycotton or something. Faithy for the three. They made this into the movie called Kid Cannabis. This is a fucking... They made a movie about this? Hold up. Oh my god, they did! Yo! I need to watch this, bro. Hold up. I gotta, I gotta fucking... I gotta fucking write this down. They made a movie about this kid? 2014. It's two hours. Kid Cannabis Overview Based on the true story of a kid named Nate Norman who dropped out of high school to sell weed. Brock for the three. If I were the, the button, the speed dating show, as soon as the button went red, I would smash my head down onto it over and over while, while maniacally laughing so they know I'm crazy. Wow.
damn good at it. Oh, pull up the trailer? Yo, you should watch the trailer real quick. Kid Cannabis trailer. Why is why is on my video recommended a video? Why is this why is this on my fucking YouTube recommended? Just a fucking video of me smoking weed. Jesus, they didn't show it. Oh my god. Yo, I knew. I was like, when we're watching a trailer, I was like, maybe I should check, bro. Holy fuck. That was that was a fucking that was a three frames away from showing nudity, dude. Wow. I'm in charge. Okay. Looks like a good movie though. Jesus Christ. Thank fuck. You're I think you're fine. No, we're definitely fine. I just watched it back. There's no nudity. It was close though. A year later, the crew had swelled to 32 people, and they're moving thousands of pounds all over the country. Nate's janky operation? Nah, it transformed into a well-oiled machine. But even then, they still had problems. One night, the runners walked into DEA agents sleeping- Mr. Nico for the seven. can we watch the mob? Can we watch the movie? What? in their truck in the forest. On a 14 below winter night, they'd lost sight of the trail and nearly froze to death in the dark. Now, the drive home was arguably the riskiest part of the entire run. So Nate began rigging all the forerunners with explosives. So if they ever got pulled over by the American cops, they could just set the weed on fire. You see, the stakes were high because getting caught now meant- What? You're in the car. What do you mean you're just gonna set the weed on fire? In a couple years in prison. I mean, this is 2000. You set the weed on fire, the cop pulls you over, it just starts hotboxing the shit out of your car. You're like. Hello. Uh, hello. I know, I know why I pulled you over. Oh, wait. <laughs> Shout out for the sub. Two after all. But to calm the runner's anxiety over moving thousands of pounds of buds across the country, committing federal- Somebody said so no movie night. I legally can't watch just a fucking movie on stream. Unless it's an Amazon Prime thing and I do a watch party. Plays for the three. Can you watch the Hereditary trailer? Not right now. I Bellin. need to get through this Nate video. Nate Pinky promised them that if they ever were arrested, just give them a call from the jail. He would pay for their bail and their attorneys and it would all be good. But Topher grew nervous with this flashy lifestyle and growing operation. He begged Nate to get out of the game, but Nate joked he would never stop until the cops got him because in his mind, he could just pay for the best attorneys to get him out. So why not go hard? Because that $3 million goal, now that's what Nate now made in a month. So to shut Topher up, he raised- Bro, I just quit. I just stopped this pay to eight thousand dollars a run locking his best friend the guy that had helped him start this entire thing in golden handcuffs but topher's fears almost came true when a fight broke out over a girl at a 150 person party the crew was hosting one of nate's dealers shot a gun in the air to break up the fight but nobody even heard it so nate plastered as hell shot off a 45 magnum into the house the crowd began screaming everyone scattered the neighbors called the cops cars sped off and crashed into the fences and scuzz got pulled over on his way home with 20 grand in his pocket he nearly peeing in his pants the cops they let him go and then the next night they threw another party at the same house equally as crazy see they felt invincible they were rich they were cool and by now the cops either didn't know about their operation or just didn't even care in nate's eyes nobody had gotten hurt nobody had gotten caught maybe this could just go on forever at 3 a.m. Nate gets a frantic call. Scuzz was robbed by three masked men. They broke inside of his home, held him at gunpoint, and wanted to know where was the cash and the buds, or else one of the burglars, Giovanni, was going to chop his finger off. Now, for Scuzz, handing them 40 grand in cash and a couple pounds in buds wasn't the end of the world, but Nate had seriously ruffled someone's feathers because they knew not just what they were up to, but also where they lived. Now, Nate Norman wasn't the only teenager. Ain't that a sign to get out the game? I'd quit. I'd say, sorry, here's the rest of my bud. I'm done. Right? Like, what the fuck? I feel like that's where you're like, all right, that's where I call it quits, right? Somebody's threatening my life. Somebody's threatening my friend's life right now, right? They're going to your fucking house. You saying, where are the drugs? Idaho, who had an enterprise of smuggling in BC buds. Nicknamed Wang, he was born in Korea. Because then he's going to start killing people. Adopted by insurance executives in Idaho. And Wang had grown up with a perfect life. He played the violin, honorable student, but at 17 years old, the kid broke bad. See, Wang began running his own wildly successful bud smuggling operation, transforming from the Kumon kid 
and to a wankster driving an Eldorado lowrider popping oxys and snorting yay all day long. In many ways, Wang was a lot like Nate, a nerdy teen who just grew into a drug kingpin, but he was also Nate's polar opposite. You see, Wang wasn't satisfied in pulling in millions with his friends. Hell no, he wanted the whole market. Now, Nate knew of Wang and other dealers in town, but figured there was so much money in the game that everyone could eat good. But no, Wang's thriving business had been falling apart since Nate's arrival, and Wang was growing desperate to gain back his market share. Sniffling his nose after racking a couple lines, Wang called up his old roommate Giovanni for a little job proposal, a hit job, to take out Nate Norman. Oh promising to pay $100,000 for the job with a $5,000 down payment up front that he would get him later. Giovanni, a dude who had never committed a crime in his life, said why not? So Giovanni called his friends and headed to the cave. Dude, 100K to fucking kill somebody is like, why? He, he's just like, all right, yeah. You don't even know the guy. You're just like, well, I'll give you a hundred grand if you fucking shoot this guy in the face. But okay. Mart to buy supplies for the hit job. A tarp, gloves, windbreakers. Wang gave him a couple handguns and for good measure, a knife as well. Since Giovanni thought, well, you can't have fingerprints if you don't have fingers. Now, Wang figured it'd be a really simple job. To exonerate himself on the night of the hit, he threw himself an alibi party to be seen by as many people as not murdering Nate. But instead of Giovanni doing the hit that night, they broke in the Scuzz's apartment, stealing the pounds of bud and 40K in cash. Because oh, so they Giovanni still hadn't received that $5,000 down payment yet. So we thought, why not make some extra money robbing Nate's crew first and then murdering Nate? Makes sense. Now, when Nate heard about Scuzz's robbery, he figured it was the cartel or maybe some other gangbangers in town, but he didn't even realize he was in a turf war with the only other nerdy kingpin in town, Wang. And for the first time, Nate was truly spooked. He moved out of his house. He rented another one across town. He started sleeping with the loaded handgun under his pillow. And Nate- I moved fucking countries. You just moved, a, you moved five minutes away from where you lived previously? What the fuck? Oh yeah, no, I'm gonna just, uh, yeah, no, I think I should move. Dude, they're gonna, you're in the fucking same city. Nate would try to lay low the rest of that summer, moving in with Buffy. But after breaking both of his arms, flipping over his dirt bike, Nate developed- You might be closer to him! Serious addiction to painkillers. And even worse, Buffy couldn't even take care of him because she'd gotten a boob job. Nate was living in fear, addicted to painkillers, and worst of all, his girlfriend had really big boobs. On November 13, 2002, a lumberjack discovers a murdered boy in the forest. Now, wow. police identify the boy as Brendan Butler. Brendan's parents were in shock. They told the cops he had played the violin. He was an honorable student, a traditional good boy. I mean, who the hell would end his life? But at digging further, the cops discover Brendan Butler lived a double life. Under the nickname of Wang, he was a big time dealer distributing buds all over the United States. And that his number one business rival was Nate Norman. Dude, there's now, when the no way. I, I just feel like that's a bad parent. I don't, I refuse to believe that any, anyone living in the same home as their parents can hide the fact that they are a multi-million dollar drug dealer and basically a fucking kingpin. Like, they're just, like, you can't hide that. Headlines broke of Wang's death. Nate told his crew, who was questioning him about it, that he had no involvement in it. But I mean, who really knew at this point? Do you know about the 2025 solar flare? What, a solar flare that's supposed to hit the U.S.? Nate had transformed from a pizza delivery driver living in his mom's basement How are they to a kingpin that? with a smuggling empire that even the cartel was jealous of. It just didn't seem out of the question that Nate could be involved. But Nate was having bigger problems to fry. Now that month, some of Nate's dealers got picked up by the cops who found cash, drugs, and guns on him. Now from jail, the dealers took their customary one phone call, and that's when the cops heard them saying, tell Nate, I'm in jail. The DEA, the FBI, and Homeland Security now knew that Nate Norman was the guy behind this entire operation. But what happened to Wang, or Brendan Butler? Now you see, Wang had no idea his own hitmen were pissed off at him. He was so coked out and on drugs, he literally forgot he owed them money. So withholding that $5,000 for months, Wang took Giovanni and his crew to the forest where he wanted Nate's body to be buried when the murder was done. Now there, Giovanni asked him again for the down payment. Wang said, don't worry about it, bro. Giovanni got pissed. Wang told him to chill out. Giovanni grabbed Wang by the neck, squeezing harder and harder. Wang, hardly able to talk, begged for his life. But Giovanni did not know how to stop what he had started. 
choking Wang to death, Jiu slashed his throat to hide the fingerprints, took the cash on him, and left Wang's body on the exact spot that Nate's body was supposed to be buried. But now with what? the body being found and the murder and the fingers and the money, Nate knew it was probably time to step out of the game. Now, with the heat on Nate's crew thinking that he could be responsible for Wang's murder, all of the runners would meet at a stash house at dawn to pack up all of their things and skip out of town. But instead, when they got there, they kicked around smoking weed, reminiscing on the good times. And then right then and there, across four states serving six warrants, the FBI arrested runners, managers, 16 dealers, everyone. warrants? They arrested everybody simultaneously. Except for Nate Norman. You see, while the cops have been tracking Nate Norman ever since Wang's murder, somehow he had outwitted the FBI, the DEA, Homeland Security for months, the same way he had avoided Giovanni. But without Nate there to pay off his crew's bail and all of their attorney fees, one by one, they all began to rat out Nate Norman and reveal the entire operation. But once Nate heard the feds had turned the crew on one another and told them all they were all going to go to jail for a very long time unless they got everyone, Nate Norman walked into the police station and the cops could not believe their eyes. They were expecting a hardened criminal mastermind, but they got a kid that used to deliver pizzas. Now, while the feds wow. estimated 2,500 pounds were smuggled in, in reality, they had moved over 17,000 pounds of weed over the border. 17,000 fucking pounds of weed. 32 mil. And that was in the early 2000s. Today, that's probably even fucking more. And $32 million. Barely out of their teens, these kids had embarrassed the United States government, and somebody was going to take the fall. Giovanni was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Brendan Butler. Wow. Scuzz and Topher were given two years in the slammer, and Nate Norman would get 12 years. And a sick twist of fate. So he's out! Hold up. Nate Norman. I need to see him. Oh, this is him when he got arrested. This guy looks 35. You're telling me this dude is 22? This guy's as old as me. Now. That guy does not look 22 years old. Nate Norman now. Oh, he looks just, he literally looks exactly the same. Just like two more wrinkles. That is crazy. This video is so good, it is. Dude, Vince Vintage just makes fire fucking videos, though. So now for the sub, NX for the three. Or for the sub, Blaze for the three. Had it not went down the way it did, Nate probably wouldn't be alive. Today, Nate Norman's out of prison. That's 57 mil today, wow. He actively runs an AC business, and it seems like life for him is doing good. Okay. Chat. I know we had the Paradox video, but we are already four and a half hours in, and I got to fucking do homework and eat. So we're going to call that there. W stream. We'll watch the Paradox video another day. Um, I'll be live tomorrow at 2. I know it's Monday, but it's President's Day. Most of you guys are off. Uh, so I'll be live early, 2 p.m. EST. We're going to be rocking Minecraft to start, uh, and then either Killer Frequency, Infinite Craft, whatever the fuck after. Uh, probably Minecraft for the first bit. Uh, Tuesday, I'm not going to be live. Wednesday, we're going to be doing uh, horror games. Uh, probably a chill Zark game and then fucking Escape the Backrooms with Max. Uh, Thursday's going to be Pacific Drive. If we fuck with it, we'll rock it the whole stream. If not, we'll switch games. Uh, do whatever the hell chat wants. Friday will be React. Saturday, we're going to do um, the Block Wars Rookies Tournament. Uh, I can't reveal my team yet, but it's a goaded team. Uh, it's a lot of variety streamers. I think it, the whole event's variety streamers this time, so it should be more fun, uh, as well. Uh, Sunday, uh, I'll be doing reacts next Monday. We'll be, uh, not this upcoming Monday. Next Monday, I'll be VR. Uh, we're not going to do Monday. We're not going to do Minecraft the next week, because this week we're doing Minecraft twice. Uh, and I promised a VR day that I couldn't do yesterday, because it glitched out. Buy me for the three. I'm a VOD watcher. I tune into streams when I can. I put your VODs in the background when I'm working and you're not streaming. And I was wondering if you'd consider leaving the music on your VODs. If you can't for copyright reasons, can you make an exception for Minecraft streams? They're really vibey and I really uh, watch them often. Oh, yeah. No, Minecraft streams, I'll leave the uh, the lo-fi music on for sure. Uh, but other streams, no. Uh, I have to I have to take that out because then I can't use it. I can't use them for YouTube videos. But Minecraft streams, I'll, I'll keep the, uh, the lo-fi music VOD shit on. Uh, but yeah, 
W stream, join the Discord, exclamation point Discord, mods in the Discord link. If you have any videos you want me to watch or games you want me to play, send those there. So I find most of the videos that I watch and the games that I play. Uh, genuinely, uh, tomorrow is obviously, I already gave you guys the schedule for the week. Uh, I'll be live tomorrow at 2 p.m. ESC. Once again, I'll say that. But uh, join the Discord, send videos to react to games to play the videos. Such tab, games such tab. If you already have fucking are in the Discord, send videos there. Uh, games for me to play in the game such tab. Uh, let's get for the sub. Uh, whenever you fucking see a video on YouTube that you think would be good for me to watch, uh, react to with chat or fucking game for me to play, whether it be multiplayer, scary, fucking horror, or whatever. Anyways, um, yeah. Outside of that, we had a great chat, great audience. Today. A lot of people in the fucking stream. I'll literally post on YouTube right now. Uh, for the people that go want to uh, want to go watch, uh, we're posting on the main today. Um, which video do we want to post? Um, hold up. I'm trying to decide what video I want to post today. We'll post why space is the scariest thing ever. Uh, cause I've been waiting on posting that one. Alright. Go watch the new YouTube video. Uh, kind of an old VOD that we did, but, uh, fucking good YouTube video. Outside of that, uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow at 2pm EST. Maybe a little bit earlier, uh, for, uh, fucking Minecraft. Uh, and then whatever the hell. Alex for the sub. We had a great chat creator audience again. Uh, a lot of people in stream. Appreciate everybody. Uh, and who do we want to raid today? Um, 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 Introduce yourself to the stream. T Nichols has 7,000 viewers. What's going on, guys? Let's raid T Nichols. I don't know how he has 7,000 viewers, but we're going to fucking raid him. He might be uh, on front page for uh, Hell Divers. But yeah, we'll raid him. I gotta play Hell Divers, by the way. Do you guys want me to play that soon? I was gonna play with Sneak this Wednesday, but he's busy, so we're gonna play it another day. Uh, but yeah. Uh, chat, hope you all had fun watching. Uh, and I will uh, see y'all uh, tomorrow, 2 p.m. EST. Catch y'all then. We're going to raid in five.